Lucinda Noble is suing her sister, Tiffany Acuna, for rent and property damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2109, Noble versus Acuna. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Noble, this is your sister. Yes, ma'am. Older or younger? Younger. Any other siblings? Many. How many? I have uh, five sisters and four brothers. And you have kids. How many children do you have? I have three daughters. How old are they? 18, 15, and almost 12. And you? I have three children, and they are 10, 5, and 2. There came a time when that was in August of 2021, according to your complaint, that you were having some housing difficulties with your children. No, that's not true. Well, Miss Noble, what led you to believe that your sister was having some housing difficulty because you start your complaint by indicating that she was about to become homeless? Her house that she was living in was being put up for sale. So the house that you had been renting... Correct. ...for how long? About two years. I'm not really sure. It was well It was being here. sold. Well, I didn't know that until I gave her my notice after I'd already previously asked my sister if we should move in. So mm -hmm. you approached her about you moving in with her. Yes, correct. And do you own your own home, Miss Noble? I do. Where you were living, you were living there alone with your three children? Yes. Okay, and how much rent were you paying? Seven fifty. Now, when you decided to move in with your sister, what rent was discussed? Well, she had told me about 400 is what she wanted. Okay, so she said the rent was $400 per month, and that was starting August 1st? Right. So this is what part of this case is about. Part of the case is about rent. You lived with your sister from August 1st, 2021, to a date in 2022 when you finally removed all of your property. Kind of. I did not remove all of my property, but I removed what she allowed me to... To do. remove. On what date? I'm going to say it was mid-May, but I'm not sure... Exactly. May of 2022. Mm -hmm. So we have August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March... April, May, so between nine and ten months. For the nine or ten months that you were there, how many times did you pay her $400 in rent? Um, She's going to have a list. I, and I have a list, too, of our... And you have a list, so right. I want to take a look at it and give me the exact well, number of months. The time I paid her 400 was, I think, only one time, and there was other times I paid her different amounts, but our agreement was, because I bought all the groceries, we just kept track on this app, which has a list. I paid way over 400 in total. Well... So our agreement had changed. Just a second. Okay. You have an app, 10 months. Mm -hmm. How much did you spend on that app 12000 something is right in here on the list. Take a look, because yep. you're going to show it to me. I paid total $10,411. Okay, and she? She total was 11291 And that was to cover groceries, food, gas money. Her phone was on your mind. This is something that I'm going to have to simplify. There came a time when there were issues with regard to you not paying her $400 a month rent, and you discussed it with her, correct? And in what month was that? April. It was before April. It was before I had gone on vacation. What month and year? December of 2021. So what I'm reading in December of 2021, you had a dispute about how much you were spending, how much you weren't spending, and that $400 was not being forthcoming just for rent. You see, I can understand that the two of you decided to split bills, everything other than the $400 rent. You each have three children. You're two adults. Let's get to December. Was it the beginning or middle of December that you had this discussion about just pay $400 a month and we'll deal Maybe with it? Maybe the middle. Okay. So we have January, February, March, April, and you moved out in May. Correct. I was kicked out illegally. Yes. In May. Yep. Left in May. So that's five months. It was suggested by your landlord that just give me $400 a month and we'll split groceries. In April, I have the proof of the text. Just a second. So we have January, February, March, and April. Four months. Did you give her $400 a month for those four months? No, but it was never discussed before. Then I have the proof that it was discussed in April. I'd like to see it. Thank you. It was discussed in April again. Okay, just a second. I just want to see the proof. Well, show me if you have 
proof of an earlier conversation? I, I don't. I believe that there was an earlier conversation. Let me see the one that occurred in April. It was mainly the receipts. I'm not getting involved with that at all. Right now, you had a place to live with your three children for much less than the $750 a month that you were paying mm -hmm. at another residence. Right. And I okay. spent way more on groceries. I did all the groceries. I, whatever. Your children didn't eat more. Right. And my children okay. didn't live there the May full time. I don't care. Okay. I'm sorry. Can I look on my phone? Is that... It might be faster. Is that okay if I show you all the right. text? I don't care where you okay. show it to me. Just show it to me. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I'm so apologize. <laughs> Okay, apologize. Sorry. On April twenty fourth. So if you want, and then she can scroll down because she kind of keeps for a couple days. Oh, that wasn't an agreement, madam. These were final acts of desperation to get you to pay four hundred dollars a month. Here. That was the first That's time I'd heard, yeah, about her. Oh, no, 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 no. That wasn't the first time you heard about it. Right. Because the first line is, $400 better be under my door. Right. <laughs> so that, that's right. not the first time you heard about it. Right. That's, a, that's an act of desperation. Okay, so you had this conversation with her in December, and she was there until May. And according to you, you only paid $400 once. That's $2,000. By the way, how are your children supported? My work. Well, I... I work, yes. Is that a full-time job or a part-time job? It was part-time. Well, you don't support yourself and your three children with a part-time job. Do you get any child support for them? I did get child support for two of them, yes. For two of them? Mm -hmm. How much child support do you receive? 300. 300 a what? A month. Do you get any other assistance? Yes, I had food stamps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you still have food stamps? Yes. How much a month? For something, I'm not exactly sure. And when you bought food for the household, you used food, the food stamps as well mm -hmm. as your other money from your part-time job and Sometimes, got it, $400. Yeah. So far, you owe your sister $2,000. That's for back rent. Now, you want to go through the damages that you allege that your sister caused? Yes. So I had two couches, and those went away. Um, what do you mean both went away? What does that mean? She got rid of them. While she was living there? Mm -hmm. And you knew about it? In what month? It was when I came back from vacation. My, my things were gone. I'm not following. You were <laughs> supposed to be gone for two weeks, according to her. You no, were I gone was for gone a little for three and a month. half weeks. You were gone for almost a month. Mm -hmm. She was babysitting for your children. She they was don't really need babysat. They're older. Well, your 12-year-old can't live by herself without a mother for a month. No. OK. And your 18-year-old does what? She works at a hotel. So she works during the day or at night? She didn't at the time. She was at 17 at the time. You're not going to leave a 17, a 14, and an 11-year-old alone for a month? Of course not. Okay, so they were home with your sister? Yes. Let's get back to the initial question. I forgot what my question was before I went off on this tangent. <laughs> couches. The couches. That's where we're at. Yes. So you went away for a month, mm -hmm. and when you came back, couches were gone. Couches. Well, like, no, just the whole house had transformed into basically her house. I don't care, basically her house. I want to know what was missing. So the couches were missing. Okay, which couches? Couches from where to where? So the couch from the living room, it was a sectional, and the couch from the basement. Living room and basement, what happened to those couches? Oh, they were gone a long time before, and I can prove you a text of her saying that we'll get, they were gone before I even moved in, actually, in August. She knew, and her daughter and her boyfriend helped me load them up and take them to the dump. She, in fact, told me she was getting rid of a lot of old furniture she did not care about. I have pictures. Just a second. What you have is proof that those two items were disposed of before she went away on vacation. Way before, before I moved in. Okay. Now, Miss Noble, your sister says that she has proof that those two couches were disposed of well before you went away on vacation. If she does, I'm not going to be happy with you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Were those two couches gone before you went on vacation? I can't recall, but I believe she wanted to make room for her furniture. Uh, just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Were those two couches gone before you went on vacation for a month? I know the basement couch wasn't. Okay. I think you're full of baloney. <laughs> she started giving my niece video games, movies, my food storage containers. She was just giving my things away. Okay. I went to graduate school after I finished with high school for nine years. I'm not dealing with Tupperware.
Lucinda Noble claims her sister, Tiffany Acuna, owes for rent and property damage. Tiffany is countersuing for an illegal lockout and filing a false CPS report. Okay, let's go. Property taken without permission. What property did she take without your permission? Okay, so the... What property owes you for rent? The TV stand, she broke it and threw it under the trampoline. What's next? The weed trimmer, she took that. Um, she started giving my niece my belongings while I was gone. She started giving my niece video games, movies, my food storage containers. She was just giving my things away. Okay, she owes you for rent. I went to graduate school after I finished with high school for nine years. I'm not dealing with Tupperware. So far, she owes you $2,000 for rent. Okay, and then there was also the wall damage, the windows, uh, the well, blinds. Well, just the a second, just a second. What wall damage and where? The wall damage is from the room that she was staying in and the room that her boys were staying in. May I see the damage that you're referring to? Here's the one more of that, and then here's the blinds. And this was damages from her cat. Well, this I can't see at all. Okay, so that I can't see at all. And if you're talking about nail holes, I'm not interested in nail holes where there were pictures, putty them up. I don't know what this is a picture of, tell me. That's where her cat clawed up the carpet to get into her room. Did you replace the carpet? Not yet. Do you have an estimate for replacing or patching that carpet? They don't make that carpet anymore. Okay, I don't know that. How did these blinds get broken? I'm not sure. Are those the ones that were in my bedroom or the kids' bedroom? Um, I really don't know, to be honest. But I do feel like I remember them being broken, but I just don't remember if they were broken when I already moved in or not. I really don't know, ma'am. I mean, honestly, I, I knew they were okay. broken. It's like a, I'm remembering, but the house, okay. like I said, was not in a good condition when I moved in. Okay, I'm not talking about the rest right. of the house. This my week. daughter is actually, Tiffany told her that she knew they were. She doesn't remember. You tell me that these blinds were in good condition before she and her family moved in. Yes. She says she doesn't remember. I have to rely on what you say to me because that's not ordinary wear and tear. No. Do you have a bill for new blinds? From Lowe's, I have the estimate of what it will cost to replace them. Okay, I'd like to see it. You do have a cat? Yes, I have one cat. Okay. She has multiple. So we're talking about $47.98. Times two. Okay. Anything else? Any other... For two blinds. I only see one. No, those are oh. two different windows. Oh, times two. You're right. Anything else? I have to remove the junk that she left at my house. I was not allowed at her house. What else? That's... Okay, if you have to think that hard, then we're finished. We're moving over to the countersuit. Okay. Counterclaim is for an illegal lockout. Okay, let me run through this illegal lockout and dispose of it quickly. The illegal lockout that you're referring to happened when your sister, who shouldn't have, took the door off your bedroom. Correct. She says she took the door off your bedroom because you weren't paying close enough attention to your children. Correct. And I assume she's talking about the two-year-old. Correct. And when she took the door off your bedroom, you called the police. Right, yep. I called uh, the police. Yep, I have the incident yep is yes. You called the police, mm -hmm. and the police came, and when the police came on, do we have the date? 26, 20 April. The right. police arrived, and they told her she couldn't lock the door, and right. you were let in. Correct. Okay. So, not egregious enough for me to have to deal with two sisters fighting. But the other part of your claim is that your sister filed a false CPS report. Right. And first, how do you know a CPS report was called in? Well, they called me. Uh, real quick. Child Protective Services. Right, they did call me. But first, I actually had the phone call from my sister, my witness, who is here right now, because she had pre-warned me because she had gotten the phone call from this sister saying, Lucy is going to call on you. Okay. Do you want to step up? Sure. Tell me your name. My name's Stephanie Oslett. I'm the when, older sister when did, too. <laughs> yeah. When did you have a conversation with Miss Noble about the defendant's children? The same night that the cops were called. Tiffany oh. had called me because Lucy's daughter had crawled through the window Purchase and opened the door. Her. So you spoke to Lucinda? Yes. On April 26th? Yes. Did you call her or did she call you? She had called me. 
because she wanted to let me know that the cops had been. Do you called. recall that conversation? Yes, I do. Okay, tell me about the conversation. She called to let me know that she was letting me know that since I was the only one probably capable or in this position to take on a child, if CPS was involved, because the two-year-old would not be able to go to his father. He was in prison at the time. And I was like, why are you calling and telling me this? Tiffany's a good mom. What's going on? And she goes, no, she's not. I've already called CPS and forewarned them that this is happening. She needs to be taken care of. What's happening? Apparently there was lice on her daughter when she was at her father's house and the two-year-old, apparently he was running around with a wet diaper. Who was taken to their father's house? The daughter that had the lice was... that. The was, daughter was the five-year-old? Yes. And okay, the not the two-year-old. Yeah, she supposedly to, had lice while she was at her dad's. Went to her father's and that was sometime in April. Is that correct? Yes. And got head lice. Well, he had told me. I wasn't for sure, but I'd let my sister know just in case that she may have lice. Let's check the girls. Okay. And your sister was home at the time? Well, no, she was never home. Everything was over text message. Cause she... Just a second. Was that when she was away? Uh, she was not staying at the house. Hmm? She was not at the residence. She was staying at her boyfriend's house that was there. Lucinda was staying at her yes, boyfriend's right. house? Yes. Okay. And that's on the 26th? Yes. Is that after the police were called? That was prior to. Supposedly, the lice was prior to, and that's why she had called them prior to that night. And she was letting me know that she had called them and that I needed to be prepared to take on a two-year-old. What did you tell her? I asked her why she would call them, what was going on, and I said, this is ridiculous, you know that this is ridiculous, and she goes, no, it's justified, and I said, I don't understand. Stan, did she tell you why? Yeah, she tried to tell me that... Uh, well, tell me exactly what she said to you. Why is this justified? She made the comment that so she Tiffany has you... not been there. Okay, you had to ask My her why. My words to her were, how do you know this when you're never there? And she said... I just know. And gave you no more specifics? No. Okay. You want to tell me about that conversation? I never said I was calling CPS. I said someone will. I know the person who did. It wasn't me. Okay. Well... But I knew it was going to be happening. Okay. Stephanie, let's get clear, okay? When you spoke to Lucinda and she said to you, in effect, are you prepared to take on a two-year-old, did she tell you that someone was calling CPS. No, she did not. She said that she would be the one calling and that she has already contacted them because of the situation at her home. Okay. Now, assuming you and your sister lived alone together, whether you spent time with your boyfriend, I don't know, you have old kids, but you were away. When you were away for that month, were you staying with your boyfriend? Yes. Okay. And you left your kids alone, correct? With my sister. With your sister? <gasps> Now, why would you feel comfortable about leaving your own children with your sister if you felt that she neglected her own children? They didn't need the amount of care that a two-year-old does. Are you telling me that a 15-year-old doesn't need a lot of care in watching these days? And... Or a 12-year-old or an 11-year-old doesn't need a lot of watching and supervising? Is that what you're suggesting to me? Not as much as a two-year-old. Well, one is a physical watching to make sure that it eats and drinks and is bathed periodically. The other two are far more difficult. You've got to have eyes all over the place to watch a 15-year-old and an 11-year-old. You've got to have your eyes on their computer. You've got to have your eyes on their iPad. You have to have your eyes on their schooling, on their homework, on their everything else. You take a month to go off with your boyfriend. That, to me, is not participating with your children, especially since you suggest that your sister, with whom you left your children, was neglecting her own children. Your Honor. I would just like to say that I was reaching out to her a lot of the time, too, where I would get one week, there was nothing. She said, I'm sorry, I had no Wi-Fi. Her children were skipping school. They were not listening to me. They would not do their chores. I, 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 do I right. need you to reinforce what I just said? Right. I, I, yeah, I don't need you to reinforce <laughs> what you. I just said. You would have had a history with methamphetamines. You refused to meet with caseworkers, according to the report you gave that me. Is a, I you, have other reports, too, if I may, please. Just to, I'm Thank you. Not, okay. I'm not finished. Lucinda Noble. Is accusing her sister, Tiffany Acuna, of refusing to pay for rent. Tiffany claims Lucinda wrongfully reported her to Child Protective Services. Now, you have something you want to say? Many things, actually. Well, many things. I don't want many things. What I want 
stand up. What I want to know is your her daughter. Yes. Your first name? Anna Noble. Anna, what do you do? I work front desk at a hotel. Graduate from high school? No. Why? I was pulled out and moved to Missouri. Pulled out by whom? By your mother? <laughs> yeah. And when your mother pulled you out, how old were you? 17. Had you been going to school before? Yes. In what jurisdiction? It was an alternative school. When you say an alternative school, what kind of an alternative school? For troubled youth. Tell me about your trouble. Was it behavior trouble? Because you seem many things. I was a very wild teenager. I until until when were you a wild teenager? Until I sent her to live with her dad. Just, I didn't ask you any questions. So now you can sit down. Okay. I'm not going into anything else. Lucinda, so so far you went away for a month with your boyfriend, mm -hmm. leaving your three children, who you say don't need supervision. How long were you home before you took the door off her bedroom? I got back from vacation in February, early February, and the door was removed in April for a few hours. Okay. Do you have any proof other than this conversation that the plaintiff called CPS? I believe it is proof, just the, the thing that was reported is something she would only know. Would that be considered proof? Well. Okay. Let me hear what was reported. It was reported that I would not treat my child with lice. That was what the CPS report was. And it was unsubstantiated, and I have that all proved this. this okay. This when, when your five-year-old went to her father, she went to visit with her father, and children do get head lice. Mm -hmm. it, it happens I'm periodically. Lots of children who go to school, who interact right. with other children, right. come home and they get head lice. Mm -hmm. had a lot of children, a lot of grandchildren, and it happens. Mm -hmm. And you usually treat it. I assume that her father did not treat it. Is oh, he that did right? treat it. He told he did. me. He told me immediately. No. I have so he alley. treated it. Mm -hmm. So how do you know that the head lice was the nature of the complaint? That's what was on the report. I was May I able... see it? Your children weren't removed, except my for your one, boy. My one son, uh-huh. And then the, that lady. And then lost. returned. All three boys. Oh, yeah. All three was... kids were taken. That's it. Okay. okay. There you go, sir. Okay, you had a prior history with Child Protective Services. Which I was Just, unaware. That's either a yes or a no. Uh, yep, yes. And during the course of those prior proceedings, which were relatively current Child Protective Proceedings, no. because that was in 2021, you were clearly drug tested by the Department of Social Services right. or Child Protective Services. In 2018 or 19, this was at my doctor's prior when I was, and they reported it that I had okay. killed one of my Okay, and at that time, well, you had an open case, okay. and you tested positive for serious drugs. Right. Very serious drugs. And this says that while under the influence of those drugs, you drove your children to the doctor's office while under the influence. Right. That's the report. Right. Okay. These reports all seem to indicate that they tried and tried to see you, but you kept canceling appointments with them and were a no-show. Well... Okay. That's what this report says. Right. You gave me the report. Right. So, let me understand this. After coming in and making an assessment, Child Protective Services determined to file a petition on behalf of your youngest child. Mm -hmm. Yes, they yes. did. Okay, yeah. Well, after everything I read there, mm -hmm. I think that that was probably a good idea. I don't know what happened with that. I assume that the petition was ultimately dismissed if you have your children back with you. Right, right Do away. you have your children back with yeah, you? Yeah, right away, as soon as okay. I went to court that day. That's okay. okay. They determined, mm -hmm. after they spoke to you, and irrespective of either her motivation or anybody acting on her behalf or somebody that she knew or her, mm -hmm. called Child Protective Services. Right. The question that I'm presented with, was there a basis for concern no. about your children? No. And based upon the reports that I've read here, and those are reports that you gave me. Right. I've... That those serious questions about what was going on with the young children in your house deserved a second look. You would have had a history with methamphetamines. You had a serious weight loss. You refused to meet with caseworkers, according to the report you gave that me. Is a, I you... have other reports, too, if I may, please. Just that, I'm Thank you. Not, okay. I'm not finished. Okay, good. Thank you. Because if you've been in family court, as I was for 25 years, often incidents are called in of suspected child abuse and neglect. A caseworker goes out, takes a look, mm -hmm and says, you know, I'll continue to watch it, but I don't have to file a case. It hasn't reached the level where I think that I should file a case and remove a child. 
In this case, Child Protective Services came and tried to do an investigation, which, according to the worker, you evaded. You missed appointments, you rescheduled, you didn't show up. One time. And then, not one time. They also had a history, a prior history of you, involving drugs, involving driving your children under the influence of drugs. Recent history, didn't happen 20 years ago. If it happened 2019, this says 21. If it happened Correct. 2019 okay. or 2020, that's still recent history. Okay. So whoever called, it was worth, according to this caseworker, mm -hmm. they had sufficient information based upon what they saw and what they knew to remove the two-year-old. So that part of your case is dismissed, which is the only part of your counterclaim that I was really entertaining. You owe your sister $2,096, $2,000 for rent, and $48 for, I forget what, what it was, blinds. Thank you, we're done. My property? This court is adjourned. We're done. I had drug tested every month during the time that this happened, and it was like a oopsie under my doctor's supervision. I just helped her and helped her and she takes advantage and takes advantage. You don't call CPS on your sister when you're the one that took off to Africa for three weeks, mm. four weeks. And this whole thing wasn't about money. It just, I needed someone to tell her, look, you, you can't take advantage of people anymore. And she's still the outcast that everyone's upset with. I'm not the outcast though, but I'm definitely not helping her anymore. So we've seen it a lot here, claims for unsubstantiated CPS reports being filed and people seeking damages for that. So I'm just wondering, do you think there was a basis? Is that why, obviously, you didn't rule in her favor on the claim of oh, the false CPS report? So there must have been something yeah. in there that... You know, when people use Child Protective Services as a retaliation for other behavior, mm -hmm. that's always abhorrent. But there are some situations where CPS may be called because someone knows that there is an abuse or neglect and has not done it until the other person irritates them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not a false CPS report. Maybe motivated by something else, but that's not a false report. And so, in this case, the defendant had a history with CPS, mm -hmm. current history with mm -hmm. CPS, that was relatively serious. Well, then it was a good thing that CPS yeah. went. Because that would be basis itself it's basis for the claim. Itself. Yeah, basis itself. That alone. And just yeah. because she was cleared at the end of the day and has her children back now doesn't mean that it was an unsubstantiated claim. Oh, no. They're watching. Yeah. They're watching. And they should be watching. I don't think any of them are Balkans. The 18-year-old daughter who was here, who was a troubled child, according to her, and never graduated from high school, although she's working, mm -hmm. because her mother moved her around also a lot, was certainly an inadequate caretaker for the other two younger children. She goes off for a month with her boyfriend. It's amazing how some children just grow up by themselves. Sometimes it works out okay. I don't know, somehow I felt sorry for all of those kids yeah. that they're not getting all the loving and nurturing that they, that they should. Hopefully maybe after today she turns it around. Doing fellow motorist, Jesus Escobar, for car damage after an accident. Court come to order, all rise. Seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2159, Baker versus Escobar. Thank you. You're welcome. This case involves an automobile accident. Ms. Baker, you are seeking $10,000 from Mr. Escobar, who you claim caused the accident, and you a lot of grief. The accident happened on what date? It happened on May the 18th, 2021. Was your car insured at the time? Yes. Yes. And your car was insured at the time? Yes. I don't want you to get into the specifics of the accident just yet. What I'd like you to tell me was, prior to May 18th, who were you working for? Brand Lighting. What were you doing for them? I drove a forklift. I load and unload trailers. How long had you worked for them? About a year and a half. Prior to that, where did you work? I think it was distribution. From when to when? Um, I worked for them for about four years. Prior to that, were you constantly employed or were you on disability? Yes, no, I was constantly employed. Hmm? I was constantly employed. Okay, prior to working for the place where you had been working in May, were you ever on any sort of disability? Yeah, I... I From when to when? May the 19th, I applied for disability because I went to the doctor... No, the day no, 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 I'm not talking about it as a result of this accident, Miss Baker. I'm asking you... Were you ever on disability before this accident? No. You were injured before this accident. You had a back injury yes. before this accident. When did that take place? That happened in 1999. 
And what happened in 1999? We uh, opened up the pick module and the supervisors was there and uh, we was walking them to show them the, the new opening of it. And the floors was made out of uh, gates, but the gates wasn't pushed together and so my foot slipped down between them and my back slammed into one of the steel beams. And were you out on any sort of a disability after 1999? Yes, ma'am. From when to when? Well, I was out on disability with that, and if I was I'm out talking for two about years. Yeah, for, I was out for two years. In 1999, mm -hmm. how long were you out on disability? I was out for two years. And the nature of your disability was the back injury? Yes, ma'am. So you went back to work in 2001? Yes, ma'am. For whom? The hospital. What were you doing there? I was a supervisor in the storeroom. How long were you working there? I worked for three years. After 2001, was there ever a period of time that you went back on disability? I'm trying to think, yes. And from what year to what year? I want to say it was like 2005. My thumb got amputated off of my hand at work. And how long were you out on disability? A year and a half. After that? I think that's, that's it for the disability. I went to work after that. This accident occurred on May 18th, 2021. After May 18th, 2021, did you go on disability? Yes. From when to when? Um, from May of 2021 to August of 2022. And the nature of your disability on all three occasions was injury to your back? No, one of them was when my hand, my thumb got amputated off of my right hand. Did you have any surgery on your back ever? No, ma'am. And you received disability from May of 2021 to August of 2022 in what amount? I think it was $1,160 I mean, $1, every two weeks. So about $2,200 a month. Yes. And what happened in August of 2022? Uh, benefits was exonerated. Ceased? Yes. And you went back to work? No, I have not been back to work. How are you supporting yourself now? I just apply for uh, unemployment right now to try to help me with my bills and my rent because um, I'm behind in uh, everything. May 2021, what was the date of the accident? May 18th, 2021. According to your complaint, you were traveling in the right lane of a highway. The defendant was traveling in the middle lane? Correct. And he veered off into your lane in order to make a right turn, struck your car? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. He says not true. His response says that he was in the middle lane, he was going into the right lane, and you sped up and wouldn't let him in. Is that what your defense Correct. is? Yeah. And your cars that collide. Or she hit you. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. That is not true. And the damage to your car, which was the red car, was where? He caught me from the... When I swerved, so he caught me from the side and he slid up to the, to the bumper. So he hit the bumper right there and that, that part of do it... Do you have photographs? I do. I have photographs. I'd like to take the photographs, please. So may I explain to you what happened, Your Honor? With what? May I explain to you how the incident occurred? When did you get these estimates? Oh, I just went to go get those estimates yesterday. I talked to them on the phone before then. No, I don't care whether you talked to them on the phone. These estimates say you just got them yeah, within the last couple of days. Yeah, no, well, this accident happened a year ago. Melissa Baker claims fellow motorist Jesus Escobar damaged her vehicle while changing lanes. Well, this was your car. Yes, that's my car. And this is the passenger front panel. When he hit me, the bumper was hanging, and so then I had to pull it off because it was dragging the ground. I couldn't drive my car like that, so I ended up pulling the whole thing off. And so that's how come you see that damage on the other side of the car, too. You have pictures of your car, sir? Yes. I'd like to see them. Anybody have a police report? I have an uh, over-the-counter report, because once the... Once no, no, no. I just asked if anybody has a police report of this accident. I I'd like to take a look at it. Where did you get this from? I went to the police department the next day and did an over-the-counter report because he asked me not to call the police. Just a second. Scene. 
My question to you is where did you get this from to make a picture of it? Oh, I had took a picture of it with my phone and, and emailed it to my attorneys. And so when they sent me a, a collective packet, that's how they sent it back to me. Did either one of you receive a citation or a ticket as a result of this accident? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Were the police called? No, Your Honor. Why not? Uh, Mr. Escobar, when he got out the car, he asked me if I was okay, and he asked me to not to call the police because he's a truck driver and he did not want that point on his driver's license. Okay. He also asked for me to pull over to the side of the road over on 4th Street so that we wouldn't be blocking the intersection and the traffic. Well, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I took a picture of his uh, insurance information. You remember that conversation, Mr. Escobar? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And so you said you would pay for the damage to her car? I offered. I was trying Just to be Just a second. Generous. You yes. said I... Yes. Well, that's a yes. yes. That sounds reasonable. You said, I'll pay for the damage. Don't call the police. I don't want this to be on my license. I'll pay for the damage. Correct. Right? I was bored to it, but hopefully I could have a chance to um, uh, tell you my, what my side of the story is. But yes, that's, no. that's what I, I said. No, I passed your side of the story. Okay. Now I have an accident. You say one thing, she says another. We're moving on to the next issue. The next issue is she says and you acknowledge that you told her, please don't call the police. I'll pay for the damage. Correct. I don't want to go through my insurance. Yes. Okay, so you agreed to pay for her damage. Yes. Do you have an estimate for your damage? Yes, I do, Your Honor. I'd like to take a look at it. So I actually have two uh, different estimates. Did you ever have the car fixed? No. Okay. Thank you. What kind of car is this and what year? It's a 2012 Kia Optima. And you own that outright? Yes. When did you get these estimates? Oh, I just went to go get those estimates yesterday. I talked to them on the phone before then. No, I don't care whether you talk to them on the phone. These estimates say you just got them yeah, within the last couple of days. Yeah, no, well, this I just accident got them happened a year ago. Yes. So I called some people to get some estimates, and they gave me some. They gave me some estimates over the phone, and so I called Mr. Escobar, and I told him what the estimates were. No, no, listen to me carefully. What you just gave me were estimates that you got two days ago, which is right. a year and a half after this accident. Right. Well, okay. I want to know where the estimate is for seventeen hundred dollars. That's the estimate. That okay. you called him with the next day after the accident. No, yeah. The I next did. day after the accident, you called him and said it cost me seventeen hundred dollars to fix it. These well, say forty six hundred. Just show me the estimate for seventeen hundred. These are from his. These are from his. Uh... That's from his insurance company. Actually, when I called him to give him the estimates of the people that I talked to on the no, phone, he no. didn't respond listen, to me. Listen to me carefully, madam. I'm reading from your complaint. Mm -hmm. I took my car in for an estimate. Yes. The next day, and I texted him the amount. He said that he did not have $1,700, and he asked if I could wait for a month. Mm -hmm. I needed to get my car fixed before then, and he suggested that we go through insurance after all. You took your car in, according to you. Yes. You got an estimate for $1,700. Okay, I didn't get it in right. Okay. Okay, that's... You got an estimate for $1,700. He said, I can't get you the money right away, so you went through insurance. Correct. Okay, so all of a sudden, it doesn't grow into $4,600. Well, this... May I? Yeah. Good. Okay, so, um... The man gave me the estimate for the $1,700, but what he did inform me was that once No, they you can't tell thing, me what he informed you, Matt. Well, basically... You can't... What, not basically. Uh, well, you, can I tell you what basically. these people... Can I no. tell you what these people no. said? You can't tell me what those people said either. Well, I was trying to explain to you why it went to $4,300, but it's It's, the same it's thing. not going to $4,300. The initial cost to fix your car was $1,700. You, as a matter of fact, accepted a check from his insurance company for $1,300. I asked my attorney Just if I was sec. supposed to. I'm sorry. Just, you accepted a check for his insurance company for $1,300. Then, according to you, they canceled the check. Okay? And I'll see the letter why they, why they canceled the check. Okay. Okay. And when you accepted the check, you signed a general release because the insurance company doesn't send a check unless you sign a general release for anything and everything surrounding the accident that took place on May 18th. That's what you sign. When you accept a check from an insurance company with regard to an accident, that's what you sign. 
I, okay. I had no clue as to what it was. You know, uh, Your Honor, I referred to my uh, attorneys and asked them what I should do, and that's no, what just they just invite me to do, just advised me to do. That's hearsay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That's hearsay. You can't tell me that. There is no attorney that would say, sign a release, and then we'll go on from there. Well, ask them if <laughs> you I'm don't sign... to accept okay. the check. You no longer have that attorney, correct? Y you no longer... No. The attorney said goodbye. Now, after this accident, which happened on May 18th, when was the first time you saw a doctor? The very next day. Let me see. Here's all my doctor's notes. No, let me just see from the next day. Okay. says, patient is disabled as a result of chronic back pain that affects her mobility and inability to perform work as required. Yes, ma'am. Right? And now you work for whom? Brand Lighting. This is also the well, Just a second. Of... What do you do for brand lighting? Oh, I drive a stand-up reach machine, so yeah. I have to get on and off. And I also drive a forklift, sit down uh -huh. forklift, where I have to clamp up and down it to get on and off. I got it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Escobar, you agreed to pay the damage to the car, correct? Yes. Um, can I speak on that? I'd like to hear your <laughs> excuse. You did not present to me anything with a medical write-up that suggests at all that this accident caused you to lose anything. Melissa Baker has accused fellow motorist Jesus Escobar of hitting her vehicle while changing lanes. Mr. Escobar, you agreed to pay the damage to the car. Correct. Correct? Yes. Um, can I speak on that? I'd like to hear your <laughs> excuse. Okay, at this point, at the time of the accident, which was date of loss, May 14, 2021. May 18th or May 14th? 14th. May 14th. 14th. May I see it? That's not true. It says date of loss. Uh, Shh. Okay. So this insurance company found that there is a comparative negligence statute in California, which means to the layperson that they will look at an accident and they'll say, well, it's not 100% his fault or not 100% your fault, but they looked at the accident and they said, our insured, that would be you, is 75% responsible for this accident. And they found, which is not dispositive for me, that you were 25% responsible for the accident. You agreed to pay to have the car fixed. Yes. That's um, the bottom line. Can I explain that why? Go ahead, um, you could explain all your life, but you agreed to have the car fixed. I was trying to be reasonable due to the fact that I was a truck driver. Mm -hmm. I'm off for three weeks, come home a day or half a day, and then I'm off for another three weeks. I was trying not to go to court. I was trying not to make things worse. And you agreed to pay to have the I car agreed. fixed. I, I, I agreed to pay. I don't care what it was. Nobody put a gun to your head. No. You know, nobody put you under a cattle. What was it, that thing? I have no Yellowstone, where I they... I know, I know what you're what talking about. What is that called? I don't know, it's a cattle guard. Cattle guard. Yeah. Nobody hid you in a cattle guard. <laughs> you said, don't call your insurance, I will pay for the damage. So you got to okay. pay for the damage. And evidently it hasn't bothered you enough because you haven't had the car fixed. Do you still own the car? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, you have fixed for $1,700. Now, you have no medical people here, do you? No, there are no witnesses over no. there. You've had a long-standing back problem. You went to a chiropractor, you went to a lawyer, on and off disability because of your back problem, and you did not present to me anything with a medical write-up that suggests at all that this accident caused you to lose anything. And if you have it, I'll be more than happy to look at it. Okay. Uh, my attorney's highlighted that part right there. I just looked at this. That's I'm sorry, I must have gave you the wrong thing. Okay. Well, do you have the right thing? Yeah. I thought it was talking about the acute back pain. No, it, I don't... Not that I don't care about your acute back pain, <laughs> but since you don't have an expert here to testify that that it's back pain... That good. that was as a result of this accident and the pro forma thing that you gave me, a check off, patient has chronic back pain, doesn't do it for me. So unless I have a write-up okay. from a hospital 
from a medical facility that this accident that happened, he says, on the 14th. You say it happened on the 18th. It happened on the 18th, ma'am. It happened on the 18th. Yes, yes, oh. Your Honor. Uh, I'm sorry, I've had this... Oh, here it is. I'm... Okay. Doesn't do it. Okay. Doesn't do it. He's got to pay to have your car fixed. $1,700. We're finished your judgment for the plaintiff. This court is adjourned. I'm satisfied. I'm just glad that the whole thing is over with. Uh, I'm just glad that uh, this is finally over. <laughs> it's been a year and a half almost, and my car is still damaged. Pretty much, yes. I was in the middle lane trying to make a right. The guy fabricated a lot of the stuff, but I just really want to be done with this. She got road rage and speed her car up and hit me. He just apologized a whole lot. He was feeling really good when he was driving. He was revving his engine a little bit because he has a charger. Music was blaring loud. He wasn't paying attention. I don't know how I could cut someone off and the person that the person I'm cutting off would end up ends up in front of me. I was going about my merry way and I seen him coming towards me through my, my from my peripheral vision. How is that how is that possible? And I feel sorry now that I even didn't even call the police and have them to come out there to the scene. I know it's a COVID time, people was having a hard time with you know making their money and the jobs and stuff. When the guy asked me not to call the police, I wasn't giving him a hard time, but then look what he done. Accidents happen. Be careful out there. I think this is a good lesson for people like the defendant who, for whatever reason, he was a truck driver and didn't want maybe the points on his license or even the hint of a car accident to be on his record if that's his business. However, I think it could have saved him from, number one, making a gratuitous promise to pay for the damages to her vehicle, which he might not have had to had a police officer come out and made a report. And maybe they would have found him less at fault than his own insurance company. And then that's he wouldn't true. have been so quick to offer to pay for the damages. Or Conversely, the plaintiff may not have mentioned anything about any back pain, and if today was the first time she was going to bring it up, I'm sure you wouldn't have offered her anything. Thing. Well, she didn't bring it up. She's had chronic back pain yeah. now for 22 years. Of course. Her allegation is that this accident exacerbated that back pain that she's had for 20 years. Then you have to come in with a medical team yep. to talk about what the nature of her injury was before, how it was changed as a result of this accident. Without that, a pro forma note that says so-and-so has chronic back pain and she can't work is not a reason to award you $10,000 for personal injury. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, I just think it's a good lesson that the police get called to the scene of an for accident a reason. for a reason. And, and although you may be concerned with other consequences of calling them, sometimes it's just the right thing to do. Smart thing to do. Yeah. Because clearly... There was no issue of alcohol no. or drugs or driving while impaired. Just an accident. It was an accident. Yeah. And there was really no issue of neither one of them having insurance. They no. both had insurance. So it was really just, I don't want to have to deal with this. I'll deal with it. I'll pay. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the $1,700 lesson tells him that in the future, maybe calling, calling will be the better yeah. course action. It's always, it's always the Princess Davis is suing photographer Tavares Long for breaking their photo shoot agreement. Court come to order, all rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2013, Davis versus Long. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Davis, what do you do for a living? I'm a language interpreter. For whom? For hospitals or law offices. Is it your own business? Yes. What languages do you speak? Spanish and Portuguese. Tell me how you met Mr. Long, who was a photographer. I met Mr. Long um, as part of a social cycling group that I'm a part of. And so they have weekly cycling rides, and he's always there, and I'm usually there, too. So according to what I read in your complaint, you got to chatting with Mr. Long, and sometime in October of 2021, so not quite a year ago, the two of you discussed him taking photographs of you to be used on his website, on his business website. That's a photography website, sir? Yeah, well, we didn't discuss, you know, we just discussed doing a photo shoot together. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, don't, yeah, yes, ma'am. Don't say no unless, you know. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. I already live with people who <laughs> say no just to say no. <laughs> you discussed taking photographs of her... Yes, ma'am. ...for your website, doing a photo shoot, and in exchange for that, she would get a free copy of the photographs. That's what you discussed? Yes. At a fair statement? Yes. Is that a fair statement? Of, of some of the photos, yes. Well, no, well, we were... I don't think that you said some of the photos. You, mm -hmm. you said, no. you sit for a photo shoot for me that I can use 
the pictures on my website. That's not what. Well, are you in the business of photography? Yes, ma'am. Is that how you make your living? Yes, ma'am. People paying you to take pictures of their wedding, communion, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Right? Mm -hmm. Anything else? <laughs> Birthday parties. Uh, and in order to do that, you have to show off your best work. Yes. And if you ask a model to do that, so that you could use a model, just as you get paid for your work, so would the model. Right. So what you did with her was barter. You bartered her time in sitting for a shoot for her to get something in return, which were copies of the photographs. That doesn't mean that she owns them. You were free to use them on your webpage, on your business webpage. Am I outlining your case? Yes, more or less. Okay, so now I will summarize what the case is about. According to what I've read, the two of you looked at the photographs and you picked out about 30 that you liked, according to somebody. He got you the 30 pictures, but then you saw a picture, don't shake it, you saw a picture that you didn't have that was posted on his website that he hadn't given you. Well, he hadn't given me any of the pictures. He, I was able to view some. With 30 photographs downloaded so that you could see them on your computer. No, he sent me a Google Drive link for 29 photos. Okay. That Do I couldn't just... download. I could only view. Okay. Did you tell him that you couldn't download them? Yes. Did he repair that? No. So now you want to be compensated to the tune of $2,500 for using your pictures on social media. Uh, That's what you ask for in your case. Yes, for using them to promote his business. That's and okay. Well, you knew he was yes, going. I did. Okay, Ms. Davis, you knew that he was going to use the photographs to promote his business. That was your contract. Mm -hmm. That's not a uh huh. That's a yes. Yes, ma'am. That was your contract. Your complaint is that he did not fulfill his entire end of the bargain by getting you copies of all the pictures. Yes. Okay. And you have a nonsense counterclaim, Mr. Long, mm -hmm. because you want money for compensation for a photo shoot. That was never... No. Well, what I want money for is, is a nonsense counterclaim for a nonsense suit. No, no, no. What, what, I, what I want money for is, if she wants me, because she actually, well, you, I want you to take down every photo and delete everything you have. Well, if you want to, that means I want, if you want to own the rights to the photos, this is what it's going to cost you. Not just a second. She doesn't want all the rights to the photos. That's she, she can't. That's what she called but, me saying. Okay. Mm. She, but she can't modify the agreement. Agree. If I find, which seems absolutely logical, and I don't know why you just wouldn't do it, give her the photographs which you bargained for so that she got copies of them in exchange for you using them on social media. That seems to be perfectly simple, Mr. Long. Did she ever notify you that she couldn't download no. the 29? You know when she notified me? I, so in May of this year, which is Women History Month, I was daily, I, I you know, post some photos of women I took photos of and just kind of like honor them for Women History Month. So on like May 5th, with 5th day of, of Women History Slow Month, down. I posted... Slow down. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. So I posted three photos of her to say, hey, I want to honor, you know, a friend of mine. It's when in history month, you know, just kind of just, you know, I thought I was doing a nice thing. So then uh, she calls me. I was picking my daughter from school. Well, she emailed me. I don't know if she emailed me Does first, this have school. something really important to do with Ye this case? Yes, yes. Oh, well, I'll get there, please. Yes, I'm not interested in right, picking right, your daughter right. up so, from school. So, but you asked me when did she notify me. So I, five months later, she notified me in May. The photo shoot was in November. So? So but you asked me when did she notify me. It she told me this right as all of this, uh, as she wanted to, to Mr. start Long, an argument. Mr. Long, yes, you can talk from today till tomorrow. I know. What I'm long with What the agreement yes, is clear. She sat for you. How long was the photo shoot? Almost, Don't look at me. How long was the photo shoot? Almost five hours. How long was the photo shoot, Mr. Long? No, it was about, no, no. about three hours. About three hours. Okay, so anywhere between three and five hours. Ma'am. Anywhere between three and five hours. Well, it definitely wasn't five. She said... It was one of the time, so it got dark early. We were outside at uh, Cascade Nature Preserve, so... I'm getting it was, actually it was, it so was, bored I know, with I'm you. Sorry, but, yeah. It was, Anywhere between it was. three and five hours. And if you shot a hundred pictures during that time... Oh, no, much more. So, so we So did, how uh, many pictures did you shoot 
probably three, four hundred. I okay. mean, it was a lot. Just so, a step. Mm -hmm. Not so. No, yeah, well, because this is important. You know? so what happened is, is that we did a lot of motion shots. So, which means that I put the camera in high continuous shutter mode. So while she's moving, I'm capturing just, I'm just taking photos, right? And then we choose out of which, out of which motion that look best. Oh, you know? no, just a second. Yes, ma'am. You have to send her the copies of the photographs that you took. That was an agreement, Your Honor. Because why would I send you every photo, and I'm going to have work out there with my name on it, that something, because you blinked and we moving. We're taking action shots. I'm, you know, I'm never, Just a second. Never do you think... Someone do you photo. think... Hey! Yes, ma'am. Do you think that this woman is going to put out a photograph anywhere that looks terrible of her? Yeah. See, that would be right. That would be ridiculous. I don't, see, we have we have a difference in in opinion, right? She may think this is a nice one, and I, as a photographer, I'm like, and another photographer sees it, they're like, this is kind of garbage, right? And so I I'm never going to give somebody something that I, I wouldn't approve of myself. Oh ever. yes. Well, what I'm telling you, Mr. Long, was that was not your agreement. Yes. You, Okay, then I'm going to, in 30 seconds, mm -hmm. you commiserating with each other from this cycle group, whatever it was, and I want you to tell me your memory of the discussion with the plaintiff about the photographs, about her sitting for you for a photo shoot. Then I'm going to hear hers. Quickly, what is your memory of the discussion, initial discussion that you had with her over her sitting for a photo shoot? Don't make things up. No. Mr. Long, then no, just no, this, tell me. This is factual. I'm then just proof. tell me. Yes. So we we were at a social gathering. It was um, a holiday party for one of the groups that we, we are part of, right? So we were at this bar called Handlebar in Atlanta, and we were talking, and I was doing some shooting inside of the party, right? And she says, hey, we ought to shoot together sometime. That's not true. Yes, just a yes, second. Yes, yes, You're going to have a chance. Don't interrupt him. Just keep going. And yeah. you understand, yes, I know the difference between yes, rain and someone peeing on my leg. Right. And I just know the difference. I've never peed on my Okay. Let's right. move on. Right. And so uh, we were at this... At so on. you were at a party. Hey, you're taking pictures. And she said to you, hey, mm -hmm. come on, let's go. Yes. Hey, we should do a shoot together sometime. Okay. And I was like, that would be cool. Okay. Right? And then so she reached out to me... Um, so the Braves won the National Se the World Series last year. She reached out to me a little before the Braves won the National World Series and said, hey, you know, would this day be good? And I was like, well, it's going to be kind of cold. This is going to be going on. So the day that the Braves, the World Series parade was, which was November 3rd, right? November 3rd is the day that we shot because after the Braves, I went and met her. Just a second. In, Do you have any idea how disinterested I am in these I facts? I know, I know, but... Okay. I, that's just, Mr. I'm Long, Mr. Long... Mind. Yes. Before she got there, you had an arrangement. And if you can't tell it to me in a cogent way, I'm going to ask her and I'm going to believe her. Do you understand? I do. I'm looking for your version of the contract. Right. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So just give it to me. I don't care who was playing baseball. I don't care who was in the finals. It means nothing to me. Princess Davis claims photographer Tavares Long broke their photo shoot agreement. Tavares is countersuing, saying Princess owes him for the rights to the pictures. Okay, you're at a bar, yes. you're taking some pictures. Yes. You're taking some pictures. She comes over to you. She said, How about a photo shoot? You say, Fine. Yes. I'm looking for your version of the contract. Right. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So just give it to me. I don't care who was playing baseball. I don't care who was in the finals. It means nothing to me. Yes, ma'am. Just tell me the contract that mm -hmm. you had with her. There had to be a contract. Well, other than us verbally, there was no written contract. We, that doesn't yeah. have to be a oh, written so, so contract. So you want to just what we verbally said? Yes. So then after that, we agreed to, to, to meet up, right? And then once we finished shooting, because we never discussed how many photos were going to be sent, right, until we, we actually looked at the photos together, Yana. We looked at the photos. She said, oh, no, I don't like this one because there's oh, something... just a second. Mm -hmm. You looked at the photos on the date of the shoot? No. Well, we, when? well she looked at some of them on the camera, like, but not every photo that on uh, the camera. But When it, did it you was, look? Oh, I sent it to her on November 6th. I emailed her. So November 3rd is when we shot. November 6th is when I sent her the photos. How many did you send her? 29. Okay, but you didn't send her all of them. 
No, because that was an agreement. Well, I didn't hear the agreement. I didn't hear anything about because an agreement. We, we didn't have a specific I didn't, number. I didn't hear anything about an agreement. That wasn't okay, a specific Okay, good. Now, now you have to be quiet. Yes, ma'am. Now, tell me your version. Make sure that I get exactly the case. Okay. On October uh, 15th, uh, we were both at a holiday event from one of our social groups, and he actually came up to me. And he was like, you're beautiful. I would love to shoot you. I'm trying to build up my photography practice. Um, and I was like, OK, what do you want to do? Like a, you know, barter thing where I get a copy of all the pictures and you can use them to promote. And he was like, yeah. He was like, we can talk about it this week. Oh, so he, what he said to me was, yeah, we can talk about it this week. Mm -hmm. Keep going. No, and we had Keep another going. phone call. Keep going. To solidify that I would get a no, copy. Just a, no, 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 oh, no, no. Don't say solidify. Solidify is a conclusion. OK. What I want you to tell me is, after that meeting, you had another conversation. Yes. Did you call him or did he call you? I called him. Yes. And I said, OK, so I know you had talked about the shoot. Like, what, what were you interested in doing? I know you talked about the barter. And he was like, yeah, I'm building up my practice. I would love to shoot you. And I asked him, I said, OK, so I'm going to get a copy of all the pictures, right? Yeah, you'll get a copy of all oh the pictures. God. I asked him then, I said, do you have a makeup artist? Because I've done this agreement before she with other lying. photographers. Okay. I would, I would like you to be quiet. Agreement. Hey, okay. I would like you to be quiet. I will. This is a pretty standard agreement with no, 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 models. Listen. OK, <laughs> I'll go back to it. Let's, so, I'm so, not interested in that or the Atlanta Braves. Yes. So basically what it was is I would get a copy of all the pictures. I would also do... Now, not ba I don't want to hear basically. I want to hear what okay. you said to him and what he said to okay, you. I, said, I don't want to hear anything else. I said... And so I now will, you're shocked. And I will get a copy now, of all the pictures just, that just he to said Just yes. keep saying it again. I heard you the first okay. time that you would sit and you would get a copy of the pictures. Yes. And he said, yeah, 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 yes. as I can imagine him saying mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, but I, OK. I did. You get an A for annoying. Mm. <laughs> part, but... Which is not where you want to be here. It's not. Because this is really a very, very simple situation. Yes. Really simple. Of the pictures that you took of her, be very careful, because she has it. Of the pictures, the 29 pictures that you sent to her, did those 29 pictures contain all of the pictures that you ever put up on your website? Or did you use any of the other pictures that you took from the photo shoot on your website? Do you understand my question, I Mr. Do. Long? I do. Did you use any photos other than the 29? That's either a yes or a no. She told me, yes, no, there's just one. Just a second. That's what she told me. That's what she told me. Well, that's a long. Yeah. Not she told me. When you had a conversation with her subsequently, and she said to you, I saw you put a picture up on your website. It wasn't one of the ones you sent to me. A normal person who is a photographer mm -hmm. who is now having a dispute would go back to the photographs and see which picture she was talking about and look to see the 29 pictures that you sent. And you would said, yes, it was one of the 29 pictures that I sent to you. My question is a simple one. Were any pictures that were not turned over to her ever used on your website? So I, 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 I want to be honest with you, right? So no, this, I want that's either right? a yes or a no. Right, well, this, this is the thing. So no, there's this no thing. That she's Ms. Long, about, Mr. Long, about Mr. Long the there's photos? no thing. Yeah. There's no thing okay. to my question. All right. There's either a yes or a no. Were any photographs other than the 29 you sent her ever put up on your website? Not to my recollection, because... OK. I, I, yeah. Just a sec. So yeah. the answer is not to your recollection. Now, I'll come back to you, Ms. Davis. Mm -hmm. You did receive viewing copies of 29 photographs. Viewing Co only copies, yes. Not Rece copies, but access to a file, yes. OK. And there came a time when, according to you, you saw a picture on his website that was not a picture that you had had a viewing copy of. Yes. Do you have that? Yes. Give me one second. Where is my... And then the communication with him, if you have any communication about that I do. photograph. Is this all clear to you, Whitney, this case? Is this clear to you? Is there anything that... Needs clearing up. Okay, that you is pretty clear. Text <laughs> message. Clear. This one was the specific one that I didn't recognize. I had seen. No, I don't want to know that you recognized it. They, oh. I want a picture that was not within the 29 photographs That's that he sent to you, and then any communication with him that you have via text message. That's the text message. That's a lovely photograph. Thank you. There she got for free. 
text messages. You can also, oh. Happy Monday sent you all the photos you liked back when we took them. Okay. So what she's saying to you here is that she feels very uncomfortable about you having pictures of her that she doesn't have copies of and having them accessible to you to post. I just want to finish this back and forth. Yes, ma'am. She does say, if you don't want to send her all the pictures, just delete them all from whatever hard drive you have and take her pictures down from any social media. Did you do either one of those things? That's what this back and forth seems to talk about. I no. didn't, and I was, I was okay. never going to do it. Because okay. Okay. Just a second. I, I, I didn't ask you if the answer is no. Okay, no. Where are the photographs now, Mr. Long? The, the photographs, um, I have, uh, I use, you know, uh, scan disk, so they're on the SD card. So very easy to make another one and just give her a copy, is that right? No. What, it's hard? Is that hard, Sarah, to make a copy of that memory chip? What do you have to do? I don't think so. I mean, I've seen people do that before. They plug something in, they plug something in at the other end, <laughs> and then right. one transfers to the right. other. Am I wrong? It's not right. hard, no. What? It's not. I think the he's, way, way, he's saying it's not impossible. He's oh, just not, not going to do impossible. it. Oh, it's impossible. But one, I don't send all photos to anyone. I've never sent every photo that I've taken of someone. I've, I've never done it. Then, Mr. Long, I don't care what you've never done. Right. Then, shh. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try listening? Well, the one that tends to benefit the most from the contract, business-wise, is you. You see, these photographs are not her business. Do you want to use these photos for her business? I, I, do you see my mouth moving? Yes, ma'am. Why don't you be quiet and just listen? Princess Davis has accused photographer Tavares Long of withholding photos from their photo shoot. Tavares says he can keep the photos he chooses because he owns them. Okay, if there is ambiguity in an oral contract, mm -hmm. two things should happen. First of all, the one that tends to benefit the most from the contract business-wise mm -hmm. is you. That's not her business. You see, these photographs are not her business. She does... You want to use these photos does, for her business. I, I, do you see my mouth moving? Yes, ma'am. She works as an interpreter. So she doesn't need for her job as an interpreter photographs like this. They're nice to have, nice to have to look through a book, nice to have professional photographs yeah. taken. I know Sarah loves to do that. All right. But this is your business. It is. And if you put up, why don't you be quiet and just listen? If you put her picture up on your website, you're the professional at photography so that you have to create a contract, you, not her. This is a sport for her. This is social. She models, you. She said, she said she models and she wants something for her portfolio. She <laughs> may want something, which is why she sat for you. She doesn't have the photograph, so you have two choices. Mm -hmm. Either you give her a copy of that drive that you have, you still own the pictures. Anytime that she wants to use the pictures, you have to get credit for the pictures. Yeah, I'm, or, I'm never going to give somebody every photo because I don't want any work out there that is not standard for my, my, my business to be out there and somebody post it. We took action shots. I'm not giving you and shots and you blinking. Mr. You Long, it's like, Mr. Yeah, Long. Mr. Long, Mr. Long, no. Mr. Long, you came here and signed a document before you came into court yes. today that you were going to be bound by any decision that I made. Mm -hmm. If you read the contract that you signed, mm -hmm. That's what it said. Okay. So where do you come from? What city and state? Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. And how did you get here? Flu. Yeah. And who paid for that? I'm assuming you did. Right. And when you got here, you stayed in a hotel. Mm-hmm. And I assume you want to go home to I Atlanta. Do. I do. Eventually. Hold on. You go. <laughs> no. I assume. And when you came here, sir, mm -hmm. you also got a fee an appearance fee, is that correct? Correct. And how much did you get as an appearance fee for trying your case before me? I can disclose that. What, disclose oh, it? Well, I'm asking you a well, question. Well, You're I, under oath. I thought you wasn't No, listen to okay. me. I'm don't sorry. look at her. Okay. Listen to me. All right. How much of an appearance fee are you being paid to have your case tried before me? $300. $300. Yes. And you'd like that $300? I mean, yeah. What? Yes, I would. Yeah. So this is what I'm telling you. 
I'm holding you $300 until she gets a copy of the hard drive with the photographs on it. Okay. So if you don't give it to her, it's going to cost you at least 300 bucks. You're just lucky I'm not taking your airline ticket as well. Is <laughs> when a contract that is verbal is interpreted, because there may or may not be a meeting of the minds in a verbal contract, mm -hmm. but it seems to me that... You were, and you're the business professional, so you're loosey-goosey. You sit for me, and I want to use it for my website. Can I get copies of the photos? Yes, I can get yeah, copies. Yeah, happened. yeah, you can get copies right. of the photo. Then you sent her copies of the photos, and then you took down the site. It's not my fault that you didn't do anything. So this is, this is my judgment. She gets copies of the photo shoot that was conducted in November of 2021. She gets copies of those photographs. Anytime she wants to use any of those photographs for anything, any publicity, it has to have your name on it, so send it to who the photographer was, and you have to get credit for it. You own the photographs. They are your photographs, but she gets copies of them because I cannot ascertain, other than listening to you, I can actually hear you saying, sure, 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 you're going to get copies, you're going to get copies, and then you selected the ones well, sure you that you that wanted to sure select. Anyway, that's my judgment. That's my judgment. You get copy, your counterclaims dismissed. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I don't agree with it. I'm glad that it's over. No photographer is ever going to send somebody 100% of any photo that they took. He owed me those photos. That was our agreement. I don't want work out there that doesn't represent me. I don't understand why anyone would want to hold photos from somebody that was doing them a favor. It just changed who I do business with. I mean, it's just like the judge said, why would I put a bad photo of myself in public? What they may believe is good may not be what I believe is good. It makes no sense. He's just a total liar. I thought I was doing something for a friend and for free. We weren't really friends. We were like social. Like, he's inflating that. Now that don't matter if it's free or not, I do put it in writing. Just go to a different photographer. Don't you waste your time. I think we have a difference of opinion on that one. Okay. My roommate from college is a professional photographer who has done sort of a similar arrangement with me, and I've learned a lot from her about the ins and outs of the photography business. And I know that a big problem for photographers is they don't want the raw, unedited, like the defendant was explaining, photos of out of, say, four or 500 out in the world if they haven't put their photographer edit or touch on it yet, which mm -hmm. I can understand if that's their business. So I, if I were ruling, I would have maybe, it's hard to split the baby in half per se, but said 50 photos out of, you know, she only received the 29. So maybe if he had edited up to his standards, 50 of the photos and delivered her downloadable versions. But I understand that sort of rewriting history from a loosey goosey type. Well, it's rewriting a contract. It is. And I actually see your point, but that would have required a lot of work for him. Yeah, but it, he is the businessman. He should have had the contract to begin with. Well, and if that's you're true. going to be making statements to someone that you're going to give them all the photos, even though that's against what I know to be standard, practice, practice. standard practice, then you're sort of out of luck. Then you're going to have unedited photos with your name attached to them. And as a photographer, you should really have more contracts in place for situations like this. With a clear understanding by both parties. Yeah, that's his business, and he really wanted to use them for business. Mm -hmm. So he should have had a more stable written contract that I could interpret. Other than that, I was really comfortable with an all or nothing. Yeah. Either If you're going to use them and you've already used them on the website, a reasonable view of both their testimonies was he said, sure, yeah, you'll get copies, mm -hmm. and then later gave her just a yeah. select few. But I actually understand now the standard and practice, and I could have offered that as an alternative. Yeah. Okay, you should... Sandra Duenas is suing exotic pet store owner Brian Chow for money from a snake breeding business. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case number 212, Duenas versus Cho. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Duenas, it looks to me from your papers that you decided to go into a business with someone. Yes. With whom? With the defendant, Bryant Chow. And you know him how? He's a family friend. And you know what his business is? Yes. What is his business? He currently sells uh, reticulated pythons, snakes, exotic animals, uh, monitors, lizards. And you like those things? My ex-boyfriend did. Did you? Uh, I was more for the investment part. Okay. 
I was the investor at the time. At the time, you reached out to this family friend who was in the exotic snake business. Your idea was to create a business. Uh, no, Your Honor. It was actually the defendant's idea. He... I don't care whose idea it was. Your idea was to create a business with your ex-boyfriend. I agreed to the business, but it wasn't our idea. Whether you agree to the business or not, you invested money yes. in the business. Yes. Which means that unless there's something wrong with you, and I see that there is not, you wanted to go into business with the defendant. Yes. So let's be easy. Okay. And at the time that you wanted to go into business with the defendant, I'll get to what the nature of that business was in a second. I know it had something to do with that wonderful-looking snake. You had a boyfriend. Yes. And the boyfriend liked snakes. Yes. And you went along with the ride. Yes. What month and year were you still with the boyfriend when you decided to go into the business, which you will explain to me? Back in November of 2019. So right before COVID? Yes. What was your boyfriend doing at the time? He was working at an airport. And he and Mr. Cho were friends? Yes. How long had you known him? Two, three weeks, Your Honor. Where did you meet him? He came into my store and acquired a... Uh, uh, I didn't ask anything. That's how you met him? Yes. I'm going to get through this case and get this lovely yes. thing out of the courtroom as quickly as I possibly can. <laughs> well, some people find them exotic and gorgeous. I find them a little bit squirmy. So in November 2019, boyfriend and you decided to go into the business, explain the business that you invested in. I invested on five reticulated pythons, one male and four females. That was the original deal. And what were you going to do with them? Mr. Brian Chow was going to have it in his shop. And um, together, we were going to breed them and make a profit out of them. So the intention was never for you to take these pythons to your residence? No. And you understood that? No. They're buying the snake, Your Honor. OK. How much were the five snakes? In total, it was $10,000, plus the feeding and the cages that he claimed that the snakes needed. Was it your agreement that for $10,000, Ms. Duenas and the boyfriend were going to buy one male snake and four females? They decided to buy two snakes. Well, when was that decision made, sir? A week after I met him, because they... When you went into the shop, did you ultimately decide on one male, one female? No. So how it is, Your Honor, is he knew my ex-boyfriend prior to the business five years ago. He sold him a exotic Australian monitor lizard. Okay. What I want you to tell me is... Did there come a time when the arrangement changed? So instead of one male and four females, you were supposed to get one male and one female? No, Your Honor. The whole way, it was supposed to be one male and four females. Do you have any sort of a receipt for that? We have Instagram conversations. Do you have that? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it. One male, four females. The guy's asking 15000 for all. And then he says, I'll drop it to 12. Then somebody, I don't have 12 now. I just spent a lot on my monitor. Let's go the rest. OK, so he said, I don't have that money now. He says, I'm getting 16 lace monitors. You remember that yes. discussion? And then that's a big investment for me right now. I'm saving up to get a house, but I'm down to breed my monitor with any of your monitors. Keep going. So far, I don't have a contract. And then somebody says, no, you pay half and I pay half. Who wrote that? He did. No, you pay half and I pay half. Then you say 6000 I'm short 6000 I want to get them, but I'm low on cash till next month. And that's from you. That's from the reptile. Uh, I had to see it, Your Honor. OK. If I invest half with you, what will be my return? And in how long? Think about it. That will be the baby's mix price. JTK reptiles, that's yes. you. Somebody's on their way. That's you and your boyfriend? Yes. We were on our way to give him the money. And how much money were you going to give him? We gave him the first time 6000 and then 4000 
A total of $10,000. You received that? Yes, Your Honor. And what did you purchase with the $10,000? If you look at the message from there, what she showed you is they pay half of the five snake. It means they get two of the snake, and I get two of the snake. They, they've been lying to you guys since day one. They want to purchase two snake. Then I told them, like, if you look at the message, I can use my mail to breed it to your female. It's an investment for you guys. Not for us. It's no us. It's not with them at all. Mr. Cho, were they supposed to take possession of the snakes? They're supposed to pick up the snake. That's why they come to the store with it. Which snakes were they supposed to take possession of? One right here and one out there. Is that a male or a female? This is the female. Has she had babies yet? No, I don't breed her because she don't belong to me. And how old is she? Right now, she should be about six years old, going seven. How long do they live? Over 30 to 40 years. Depends on how you take care of them, like I take care of them. And there's another one outside the yes. courtroom that's the same as this one, yes. also a female? Yes. And you gave them the $10,000. He acknowledges the $10,000. So we have a verbal contract that you were going to pay for some snakes. He was going to order the snakes yes. for you, which he did. And that was accomplished and... The payment for the snakes was done on what date, the first payment? Approximately in November of 2019. And when was the next $4,000 payment? The same month, I would say like a week. Good. And when did you order the snakes, Mr. Chow? Right after I get the... the tenth. Yeah, because I cannot just acquire the animal without the payment. Okay. So now you've got the payment and you order the animals. Yes. On what date do they arrive? Two days after. Their FedEx delivered... To my shop. And when did you notify the plaintiff that they were there? The day that they came. I tell them the snake is So it was for also them. in November, sometime yes. in November. And when did they arrive? The snake no. arrived. Oh. The plaintiff and the boyfriend. They arrived a week after I notify the boyfriend. Okay. Now, Ms. Duenas, a week later you went to the shop. And what happened when you went to the shop? Now he's got $10,000 and he's got two snakes. I just want to clarify, Your Honor, that we even gave him money for the tanks because here in the conversations it says that he can't continue having them in tubs. So he needs us to give him money to invest, to buy the tanks, to house the snakes. So our original plan was for him to keep the snakes because he has the shop. We, at the time, lived in an apartment. He was well aware of this, that we couldn't okay. have big snakes in our apartment. He says no, you say yes. I'm not sure how I can resolve that. I'm trying to simplify this contract. And you said you recorded all this. Yes. I'd like to see it. All right, watch out. Come back away. I told you, don't play with my money. What are you doing? What do you mean? He owes me money. I don't care. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Cassandra Duenas claims exotic pet store owner Brian Chow owes her money for a snake breeding business. Brian says Cassandra changed her mind about the business after he purchased the snakes. Okay, part of the contract was fulfilled because you paid him. Then he ordered the snakes. Second part was fulfilled. I want you to tell me what happened when you went to see the snakes. You say to see them. He says to pick them up a week later. So when we went to the shop. Who what went? Led us to Who the, went? My ex-boyfriend and I. What led us to there is because after he obtained the snakes, he was not reaching out back to us. He uh, was Just a week later. Yes. You went to the shop. Mm -hmm. He notified you that the snakes were there. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. Now, you went to the shop for what purpose? Because he switched it and then he said it was two snakes when originally the plan was one male and four females. That one male was going to breed with the four. So right out the back, he lied to us what our agreement was here that he clearly texted us and said four males and one female. So it was five snakes. So we went to and, the but shop. Yeah, but there was a problem there with pricing in the Instagram messages, a suggestion, because some of the texts were unavailable. He said originally they were $15,000. Mm -hmm. And then there was some discussion of $12,000. And then there was some discussion of $6,000. He says he'll pay half and you pay half. And there, I can imagine that there was an, some sort of an agreement for you to keep the snakes if you were going to pay half. No. 
you were always supposed to give them the snakes. It's Why would you pay half? Then they get the two of the snake and I get the two of the other snake. It's five of them. And okay. the one that we're gonna pretty much, they can have it if they want it or I can use it when I need it. You mean the male? Yes. So that was the business. Anyway, you went there and what happened? So I went in recording. My ex-boyfriend told me, hey, Record Don't whole... tell me what your ex-boyfriend told you. Okay. Just tell me you went in and okay. what happened. We went in there and we asked him, hey, we agreed on five snakes. Now you switched up and you said now it's two snakes. First you told us it was 15,000, then 12,000. You were playing games with us the whole time. And at this point, after a week later that he said that he got the snakes, then he told us it was two snakes. At that point, we were upset because we had planned and we had counted with five snakes. That's why we gave him that ridiculous amount of money. And basically, we didn't want nothing else to do with him. We wanted our money back. And that's what we went for our okay. money back. Just a second. Yes. So you walked in wanting your money back. Yes. Do you have any text messages, Instagram messages, suggesting that before you got there, mm -hmm. you would said to him, we changed our mind, we don't want to be in business with you, we want our money back? No. Nothing? No. He Had wasn't they... reaching out, sorry, Your Honor, he wasn't reaching out to us. He was sending him video calls, he was calling him through text message, my ex-boyfriend. And... I don't care. You paid the money, he got snakes. The question is, you think there's supposed to be more than two? He says, two, more were more money. So the ultimate agreement was for two. So what happened when you went there? You're there with your boyfriend. Yes. And you and say, I want my money back. Mm -hmm. And he says. He says, I don't have the money here. I have two snakes here. Are you telling me that he didn't call you and say your snakes are in? Is that what you're suggesting? Do you have an invoice for these snakes, Mr. Chow? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to see the invoice for the snakes. By the way, your boyfriend has other of these uh, exotic creatures. Is that right? Yeah. The people that I get them. What kind of exotic creatures does he have? One that he sold him, an Australian water monitor from the Philippines. And? He has two rhino iguanas, a pair. He has a, uh, I don't know the name, but it changes colors. Mr. Chow. Yes. This is a wire transfer, May 24th, 2018. And the date of this wire transfer is August of 2018. And those are for the lace monitor that the dip. Are these lace monitors? Yes. Sorry, Your Honor, these are not lace monitors. These are reticulated pythons. These are not monitors. Monitors are lizards. These are snakes. Lace monitor bell face. Yes, Your Honor. Well, that's not that. No, Your Honor. Well, these are useless. Yes, but that's connected to the rest of what, I, what they did. What does that have to do with these two snakes? What well, I want to see is when you purchase these yeah, two snakes. Yeah, I don't snakes. have it, Your Honor. I'm well, sorry. get it. What I, do you mean you don't have it? I left it at home. I'm so sorry. Well, what'd you bring these for? Those are the time that they both got arrested when they went to my shop. Yeah, but break... you, you now have those back, right? Yes. You have those back. So if you had to take documents, why didn't you take the documents for the snakes in question? The lace monitor lizards aren't in question. You have them back. They may have taken them. They were arrested and you finally got them back. So I don't understand that. I just mistake and grab the wrong paper. Well, Mr. Chow, do you deal with these people regularly, that you buy snakes from them regularly? Not really. It depends on the size of the animal and depends what kind of animal. Well, you have the date of purchase someplace, <sighs> Mr. Chow, and I don't want you to waste my time. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That's why I just said I don't have it, Your Honor. Did they purchase that kind of snake? Yes, Your Honor. Is that correct? It was five snakes, Your Honor. Uh, don't give me five. That type of snake. Oh, yes, the reticulated python, yes. And the one that's outside is the same, correct? Yes. And you did not purchase baby snakes. No. You wanted full-grown snakes because they were a business. You wanted them able to be... Breed. Breeding. Okay. Should have brought the paperwork. And you went in there that day in November because you had changed your mind. Yes, and on top... Yes. Just to see, because you had changed your mind. Yes. That's the answer. You had changed your mind. You can give me a whole bunch of excuses, and you told him you changed your mind, you want your money back. And he said, no, because I ordered the snakes, and I got them in. 
and they're yours. Contract is completed. I'm merely holding your property. And then there was a kerfuffle. And tell me about the kerfuffle. The issue was that it was going back to what I was saying is then we asked him as well, can we have, like, receipt? How much did you really pay for them? He no, no, tell- that's not your business. That's not your business, how much you really paid for them. He made a deal. You paid him. If he got them for $2,000 and you paid him ten, that's nothing. The kerfuffle, let's draw this down to its most simple English. Mm-hmm. You wanted your money back and you wanted to cancel this contract. Yes, it's just when we arrived, those weren't the snakes that we ordered. These were the breed of it, is the ones that he was putting here on Instagram, which I have, which is not those. So we ordered something and we got something else. So, just, so is what you're telling me, you went there to pick up your... Because now it's changed. You went there to pick up your snakes. Mm -hmm. When you got there, they turned out to be a different... breed. It's like the... Pythons, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're pythons, but it was a different kind of python. Mm -hmm. Now you're telling me because it was a different python, you wanted your money back. Yes, because it wasn't what we paid for. It's like we paid for a Ferrari and we got a Toyota, (laughs) basically. It's basically what... You, You know nothing about pythons, so... You're taking your cues from your boyfriend, because that's his strong suit. Is it yours as well? No, I'm just the investor. Right. So your boyfriend had a conversation with him and said, those aren't the snakes that I ordered. Yes. Okay. And I want my money back. Yes. And you said you recorded all this. Yes. I'd like to see it. And when he broke the glass, where did he take them? He put it in a bin. And is that you carrying them out? Yes, and that's the reason why I was charged with the robbery, just because I walked out with the item. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) That's a co-conspirator. Cassandra Duenas is accusing exotic pet store owner Brian Chow of wrongfully keeping money for a snake breeding business. Brian says he fulfilled their agreement and claims Cassandra stole property from his store. And you said you recorded all this? Yes. I'd like to see it. Okay. You just press play. Which one? When, Which one? Oh, right here. And then you press that. This one? Yes. Oh. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. You guys just want to do the money back. Yeah. Um, the 10180 in total, and then um, money on top of that for lending you the money and everything. I didn't see that coming. Uh, yeah, because we didn't see this coming. You, you just kept on giving us a turnaround and a turnaround. Oh, no, what? About the mail. Remember that no, you... No, that's why I'm waiting for the mail to be delivered. I don't have the mail. Yeah, but remember you had told us that the guy had it because he had to leave yeah, and he had to cut out because he has surgery and all that stuff. Yeah. We gave you the money right there and then. You don't understand what mission we had to go I through. don't know. I don't mind getting you guys your money back, but I don't have cash right now. You guys got me by surprise. Uh, yeah, yeah, but we're going to have to do it today, though. Like, we, we need our money today. If you want it right now, right now, I don't have it. We told you we want to do a business correct, and you just keep on giving us another day and another day. We told us as soon as we give you the money, the snake was going to be here. Yeah, it's not yeah. about me. It's the guy. It's not me. I'm just buying the snake from a different guy. And then another thing where you messed up, you said five snakes for 6000 and you come at me with four, and you wasted my money. Yeah, and I told you that he gave me only Four snakes, the big giant. Yeah, and why would you waste money if I told you to get the five snakes? If you worry about the last one, I can pay for it. It's a meal that we don't need. But I have to do all this, so I have to get like this for you to do that? No, bro. How can I trust you now? Bro, the four snake is right okay, here. You, no, 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 I, I, no, I'm going to go get something. What's wrong with you, bro? I'm just asking you. No, no, let, no let's, let's talk. No, no, we're not going to talk. I told you don't f- with me. I don't call with you, bro. Up. Thing, Why? Because What's that's wrong? Money. Because we gave you a lot of money. Uh, we're talking about over ten thousand dollars, and you're just giving us the runaround. First, I, you told us five snakes. This is what we can do. I'll take, it. and when you get the money, I'll give it back. Yeah, female too. Oh no. Oh no. All right. Well, come on, bro. 
it's, you're looking at a 15 I grand. I told you, don't play with me. I don't play with right. you. You don't even have the money right open now. Open them up, man. No, I got the hot. Open them up. Open them up. I'm trying to talk to you, bro. No, there's no one talking because we gave you the money right here and then. That's unprofessional. You're trying to scam us, and you don't do that to people like that. I didn't. How did I scam you? You're telling me that you don't have the money. I have half of the money because I'm waiting for the snake. Bro, if you guys get to get arrested. There's no arrest. We got, We're just we getting what okay. you took from us. Over $10,000. I'm trying to talk over to you. We're going to open it. I tried to, I told you, no, we tried to talk money. to you. I'm you're not, telling us you're going to have the money. I have everything in video. I, I okay? don't care. I, you All can right. record me. Bro. Right, so are you you don't play it? with sure. people's money. You can call you me whatever you want. You owe me over $15,000. This is fifteen grand. I don't, I don't, we don't care. Can you call a cop, please? No, no, no. All right. Watch out. Back away. I told you, don't play with my money. What are you doing? What do you mean? He owes me money. He needs I don't care. Get out. 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 Get That's your boyfriend breaking into the... Yes. Yes. And when he broke the glass and took out whatever lizards he took out with him, where did he take them? You were still with him. Yes, he put it in a bin. And is that you carrying them out? Yes, and that's the reason just, why I was just... charged with the robbery, just because I walked out with the item. That's all right. That's fine. <laughs> that's a co-conspirator. Ultimately, the lizards that you took were returned to you. Yes, Your Honor. And it seems, Mr. Chow, at the beginning of this case, I must acknowledge to you that I was sympathetic to your position, that they had ordered snakes. You ordered them. Yes, you sir. got them. Yes, Your Honor. And then the contract is completed. Uncross your arms. No, I'm so sorry. But it's clear from the tape that the plaintiff played for me that you acknowledged that you did not fulfill your end of the contract, that you were blaming your inability to fulfill your end of the contract on some third party. Is that what I heard in the tape? I mean, you know, my hearing's not really acute, but that's what you said. I have no control. I can give you back half your money, but I can't give you back all of your money. So the contract was not complete. It was complete because they supposed to get only two snakes. I didn't see anywhere where it says just two snakes. There was a whole bunch of conversation there about the male snake, and you were supposed to deliver to them the male snake. And you said, I don't have that money now, but I can get that money for you. I can give you the first money. I don't have the second money. It was clear that the contract was not complete unless you have something to show me that it was. But what I heard, it was not. That doesn't mean that Ms. Duenas has the right to break your property and to steal property that belongs to you. What they do is they come into a court and say, you have my money. The contract was not fulfilled. I want my money back. That's what you do. Are you in the business of breeding snakes for your store? Yes, Your Honor. And if we were to go on the internet now... Yes, Your Honor. How much would one of those snakes, which is six or seven years old, according to you, sell for? Right now, this size, you're looking at it about six to 7,000 each one. But if you troll the internet of people who actually like those creatures in their house, for whatever reason, if you put up that snake on the internet for sale, how fast would it take you to sell it? I still say like about a month, a month and a half. They're rare. Yes. Is that right? That's what you're saying. It's rare and is just not a lot of people will acquire that much money. Even though they can sell the babies. And how many babies do they have? In a year, they can do from 30 to 50. And each one of the 30 to 50, you can sell for $3,500. Yes. I suggest you do that. She gets her $10,000 back. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I'm very happy, and I'm happy that she was able to see herself that um, the defendant got caught in multiple lies. They're just a customer. He wasn't truthful since the beginning, um, ever since we invested. They bought a snake. I just want to give their, their snake, but they don't want to take it. And it's very sad how nowadays you can't trust in anybody.
I think one great lesson that a lot of people can take away from that is you have to know the business that you're investing in. I can appreciate she was sort of doing it for her boyfriend and he had the knowledge about the exotic animals, but that's her money at the end of the day. And if you're going to put your own hard-earned money on the line, it should be a business that you at least put in the time to learn about. To understand. Exactly. So that you don't have to rely on somebody else to make the right decisions. Who's going to be gone tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And your money Who potentially could, and then you're left on your own, having to sue and navigate a field that you really know nothing about. Smart. And it was also an example of a contract that was not fully executed. Mm -hmm. I actually thought when I started the case that there was an offer, mm -hmm. an acceptance, you perform, paid the money, got the snakes, yeah. and then you can't change your mind. Yeah. Once you get it, you say, well, I changed my mind, but that's not what happened. Nope. And her video demonstrated that that's not what happened because Mr. Chow started to waft. Well, it's not my fault I don't have your mail. It's another guy, and I would give it to you, but I can't give it to you as soon as I get it, you know. Yeah. So he did not deliver on the contract. So I had very little compulsion other than to say... You don't have to take the snake and you get your money back. Yeah. Anyway, done. Yeah. And the snake is gone. <laughs> Let Nishera Garrett is suing her former friend, Michael Codia, and his girlfriend, Brianna Serrano, for a personal loan, car damages, and an assault. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2056, Garrett versus Codio scenario. Thank you. Miss Garrett, this gentleman, Michael Codia, is that correct? Codia? Yes. You and Mr. Codio have been lifelong friends, according yes. to what I read in the complaint. Lifelong, you're both very young. How do you know him? Well, we used to ride bikes together. His mom used to also braid my hair when I was a child, every Sunday. But you and Mr. Codia, were never involved in any relationship other than just friendship? No. And, Mr. Codia, Miss Serrano is currently your girlfriend. Correct. Yes, yes. She had been your girlfriend and been living with you for a while, and you have a child together. Yes, correct. Well, she's currently pregnant. We're expecting, we're, hmm? we're expecting yeah, we're expecting. Great. <laughs> you had a fight. Yes. With Miss Serrano. And that was around June of this year? Yes, Your Honor. And it was a substantial enough fight that Miss Serrano left the home. And she left the home with your child. And how old is your child? As I was saying, we, we are expecting. So you don't have a child no. together? She's six months pregnant, though, currently. OK. So you just living together. And she left. Correct. At about the same time, Miss Garrett, your friend, needed a place to stay. I wouldn't say needed a place to stay, but. What would you say? It was more like, um, I, I kind of had a clue like she had a place to stay, but it was just one of those situations. No, no, look over here. Look over here. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, Mr. Cody, I want you to understand there are very few stories that are new under the sun. I want you to really understand that. I have children. I have grown grandchildren, boys and girls. I've seen all the movies that I want to see about romance and guys. <laughs> so your girlfriend leaves you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And would it be fair to say that you invite Miss Garrett to come and stay with you? Yes, it would be fair. Had you ever invited her to come and stay with you before? No, I have not. Not in the current apartment that I'm staying in right now, no. Had you in another apartment? No. So the answer is, you had never invited your friend to come and stay with you before? No. Interesting. So on June 27th, she left. On what date did you invite Miss Garrett to come and stay in your apartment? June 16th. June 16th? Yes. So 11 days before Miss Serrano left? Miss Serrano left about a week prior to her coming. What date did you leave, Miss Serrano? Do you recall? I don't recall. I recall it was the end of or mid June of this year, I would say. I had personal things going on, so I really wasn't, you know. <laughs> now, Miss Serrano, I'm going to ask you why you left. Um, we had a falling out. Me and Michael had a falling out. Yes. What did you and Michael have a falling out about? Well, at the time, my mother was in the hospital, so that it was a disagreement surrounding having to move back home and take care of her in the household. And? And that was pretty much it. Well, what did he say? He said he didn't want you to, and you... Yeah, he pretty much, long story short, didn't want me to move back to my mother's house, so that caused, you know... Okay, so he wanted you to stay? Yes. 
Yes, he wanted me to stay, but you know. He wanted you to stay. Mm-hmm. Now, did you know that the two of you were expecting at that time in June? Yes. yes. So he knew that you were expecting a baby, that you wanted to go back to your mother's house because she was ill and you wanted to help take correct. care of her. Is that correct? Correct, yes. And despite the fact that he said, don't go, you left. Yes, ma'am. And you went home. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it would be fair to say that he was annoyed. I give you one, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I'm getting this whole picture now. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> okay. And about a week later, he invites this attractive young lady who's been a friend of his for a long time, a non romantic friend, to move into the apartment. Yes. You know that that was nasty, right? Oh, no, I'm... I, yes, I know. You know that that, that was nasty. That was an agreement between them and No, no, no. Them, you know. But you know that that was a sort of a nasty thing oh, to no, do. Oh, no, I'm fully aware. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I, just want, yes. I just want you to know what you're you. sort of dealing with. Yes, I'm, you know? so I'm fully aware of what I'm dealing oh. with. <laughs> thank okay. you, though. Thank you. I okay. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, so, Mr. Cody, I wanted to sort of get even a little bit. You invite Miss Garrett to come and move in, no rent or anything, because you didn't have an agreement to pay rent. You weren't going to pay rent or anything, and you moved in. And you moved in on? I moved in on the 1st. On the 1st of? July. July 1st. Now, Miss Serrano, I'm going to come back to you, because this is such a fascinating story. Oh, Lord. <laughs> such a fascinating story. And he deserves to get dumped on a little bit. Oh, there's you know? more where that came from, yeah. Hmm? I said, that's more where that came from, yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. And between the time you left yes. and July 1st, yes. when Miss Garrett was invited to come to stay at the house, yes. were you in communication with Mr. Codia? Yes. I would say, like, every day or every other day, we spoke, you know, okay. arguments, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah. With the baby. Well, you know, first of all, you're pregnant and you yes. have emotions and then you're taking care of family members and whatever, and so... I got it. Did he tell you that Miss Garrett was moving in? Yes. When? I would say I found out around, like, the 27th, 28th. Of June? Yes. Tell me how you found out that she was moving in. I believe at that point she was already moved in at that point. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what made you think that? Just based off of how the conversation went of, of, or how he told me. Tell me what he told you. What I was told was that a friend was moving in to solely cook and clean. Sorry. See what's happening, Tim? This fly is getting vengeance on it. Get it on me. Too. What the hell is going on? Oh, you got a swapper too. Wow. I'm waiting for it You're to waiting. come over here. Yes. <laughs> Nishira Garrett claims her former friend Michael Codia and his girlfriend Brianna Serrano owe for a personal loan and an assault. Tell me what he told you. I'm um, curious. Well, I want to know. Was told, what I was told was that a friend was moving in to solely cook and clean. That's what I was told. Okay, did he tell you who? Who it was. I never met her. But he prior. told you who it was? Yes, he told me who it was. And that made you, I would probably guess, a little annoyed and unhappy. I mean, it, I was annoyed. I, I, I would be annoyed. I mean, I was annoyed because I had personal things going on, but in between that time before actually realizing that she was living at my apartment, I actually had a brief interaction with her. I met her at a park. I met her, so... Between the time you moved out? Yes. Okay. Was it you met because you contacted each other or no, you met, met by accident? Me and, we met because me and Michael just, you know, had a conversation to have had at that point in time. I'm assuming she was there in the area, so he just wanted to kill two birds with one stone. He said, do you want to meet the person, you know, who, who's there, who I'm living with, and that's how it went. And was it a cordial meeting? Yes, it was. You met her, she met you? Yes. And he said, I just want you to meet the lovely-looking girl that I'm now living with because you went home I to take care of your mother. I guess so, if you wouldn't have put it... Yes, he... I don't feel... Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. This is what your case is about. First, you claim that you loaned Mr. Codia $750 for rent. Yes. And you did that because he said once Miss Serrano moved out, she wasn't paying her rent. He was short on rent. That's what I read here. Mr. Codia has a whole different story. He said while he told you that he was a little short on rent and he was going to have to get a third job. That's not true. Just a second. You jumped in and offered to give him $750. That's what you wrote here. Is that right? 
Correct. Now, Mr. Codia, did you tell Ms. Serrano that somebody was moving into the apartment just to cook and clean? That's what she says. Yes, that's exactly my words. Exactly my that's, words, yeah. That's exactly what you told her. Correct. You didn't tell Ms. Serrano, the soon-to-be mother of your child, that you had a roommate who was paying rent. I did not. Ms. Serrano, what kind of work were you doing when you were living together in June? I had a work-from-home position, will still currently do as a Medicaid specialist. Were you sharing rent with him? Yes. Everything was 50-50. Did you pay him any rent in July? No, I did, did not. Did you pay him rent in June? Yes. So you paid him the $750. That was your share of the rent? Is that yes. what your share yes. was? Yes, that was my share of the rent. June was already paid for. July, I did not pay because I did not believe I was going to be there. Okay. Tell me what he said to you that caused you to give him the $750. Well, he texted me one morning and said that Brianna was no longer going to pay her half of the rent as of July, and that if he could... You were living there already? Yes. And if I give him 750 he would give it back to me. And we never discussed anything about me cooking or cleaning. I actually brought groceries, which he said that he would pay me back for, too, while I'm staying there. OK. So, so you were actually exchange. there for five days, is that right? About five days. Five, six days. And at some point around the first week in July, July 5th, 6th, or 7th, you came to the apartment? Yes. Tell me what happened. We had went inside the apartment. Who's we? Michael and I, sorry. Michael so and you I were were... So you weren't staying there. Where had you met him? We actually met at work. We've been together, well, we've been together for a year no, and a half. No, I understand that. Yeah. But you came home to the apartment together, and that was, I think, on the 7th of July. Yes. On the 7th of July. Where had you been? You'd been out, you hadn't been staying in the apartment. Oh, no, yeah, I was out actually just going to rosaries and stuff like that. I actually went to go pick him up after a family function from work. After picking him up from work, we went back to the apartment, went upstairs. Was that the first time you had been back to the apartment? No. I've... Since you left? Since I left, I've been there on and off. Like, not on and off, but, like, back. every other couple of days. But I've been there, not living there, but I've been there spending the night and, you know... Have you ever... When you were there, have you seen Miss Garrett? Nope, but I've seen her belongings, though. Okay. But you knew she was there, because yeah. he told you that she was there. Exactly. So yeah. on the yeah. 7th, you picked him up, you went back to the apartment, and yeah. you'd been there before, but you had never actually physically seen her in the apartment. Correct. Despite the fact that you knew she was there. Correct. Because you'd been introduced to her. Correct. OK. And what happened? So we went upstairs. She seen that I was with him, and I guess that must have made her mad. No, just tell me what happened. So there was an argument. Tell me what the argument was. I don't, even, what? I don't even know what the argument was, honestly. Did... She just seen me, and then there was an argument that unfolded about what I still don't know still to this day. OK. <laughs> so now, Miss Garrett, they came home, and... OK, so them two never came in the apartment together at all that night and previously. No, just tell me that night. Oh, that night. So me and Michael discussed that, hey, listen, things are not working out. He has had multiple people in and out his house, and he was making me very uncomfortable, as well as Miss Serrano popping up. So, so what do you say? He's had multiple people in the, the house? Guys, women every night. I would sleep in the park. One night, I slept in the park because he had Miss Serrano popping up at 3 o'clock in the morning, her throwing my things around, telling me to get out the house. So I had to go in my car and go sleep in the park. And we had conversations that night when it happened, when she popped up. Hey, can I go... What sleep? date was that? It was, I want to say, July the 2nd or the 3rd. OK. Yeah. Before the 7th. Right. OK. And that's when you went out and slept in the park? Yes. Just a second. Mr. Cody, you remember that evening? Yes, I do. OK. And that evening, on July 2nd or 3rd, Ms. Serrano was around. And they don't get along. They do not. Which is exactly what you anticipated. Of course. When you invited her to stay with you. Sadly. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Going to have two women fight over the prize, Ugh, the grand great. prize. <laughs> okay. Did you take seven hundred and fifty dollars from her? No, I did, did not. You t did you? I didn't ask you with loan. Yes, she I did. didn't ask you. She has proof that she gave it to you. Yes. Yeah, she okay. Gave it. So let's not play, did you take $750 from yes, her? I did. So it goes back to her. That's $750. Now we're going to get to what she alleges is the remainder of her lawsuit, which is damages for assault. OK. On the 7th of July, there was some sort of an altercation. You want to tell me what that was? Yes. 
you did something that annoyed him. You went back to take care of your sick mother, which also attests to his bad character. And then what he does is he invites someone, a woman, to come into the house because he knows that it's going to irritate you. That's exactly what happened. He acknowledges that. Nashera Garrett has accused her former friend, Michael Cotia, and his girlfriend, Brianna Serrano, of damaging her car and assaulting her. Now, on the 7th of July, there was some sort of an altercation. You want to tell me what that was? Yes. So um, that evening, I went into the house, and he had his witness, Darius, there. And this person? Yes. And me and Michael had conversations about him before, and I just thought it wasn't a good influence. So that evening, I walk in the house, and I had... I'm sorry, let me back that up. I asked Michael if he's going to have men come in the house, could he please be there while I'm there with them? Because I didn't feel comfortable. He said yes. So when I walked in that evening and saw Darius there, I text Michael and said, Michael, we need to have another talk. Because every talk we have, I'm thinking that you, we're having understandings, but we're not. So, and Darius set up a whole twin-sized bed up in the living room. <laughs> in the living room. So I went out to my car. I said, Michael, when you get home, I'm in my car, so meet me in my car when you get off. It was around 8.30 when Michael had came, and I was sitting in my car. Me and Michael were talking, and... Was he in your car with no, you? No, no, no. He was outside of, of my driver's side. So that's when Miss Brianna came, and she started hitting him upside his head, and I tried to get out of the spot that I was in. And next thing I know, my window's down, and she comes and she's attacking me, punching me in my face. She keyed up my car. When she first came up to my window, she keyed my car. Yeah, I have... I can show you. What? Okay, did you file a police report? I didn't. Why? I just didn't. I took care of my bruises and my scar. I just... I did call 911, but then I hung up. I just... <laughs> I just didn't. And I... Okay. Do you have photographs of your injury? You have... Yes. So what you're telling me is that this was a scratch yes. across your chest. Mm -hmm. And that's a scratch that was caused by Miss Serrano. Yes. And that was in July. Yes. Miss Serrano, I'd like to hear your version of what happened on the 7th of July. Like I said before, there was just an argument that okay. took place. There was an, I, want you to start, I want you to start the argument the from the beginning. Okay. Okay. She's outside in her car. Mm -hmm. Michael is talking to her at the car. Oh, yeah. Did you drive over there or did you walk? How did you get I there? I parked my car, like, in front of the house because they were on the side street. So I walked... She walked there? Exactly. Parked yes, the I car. Walked. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions, Miss Serrano. Yeah. Did Mr. Codia ever give you an indication that Miss Garrett was no longer going to be living there? Not that I could recall, no. Well, I, I mean, want I you to try to recall. After, I was told after that whole they went the day after that the conversation was going to be for her to leave the house. OK. And what were you coming over for? What brought you over there at 8 o'clock at night? For him. It what do you mean, for him? Well, he left something in my car. He left a charger or something. It was something he left in my car that I was returning back to him. Did you tell him you were coming over? Nope. nope. I just popped up. Not... <laughs> the answer is no. No. You were curious. Yes, I was. Of course I was. There you were. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. See what's happening to him? This fly is getting it's vengeance crazy. on him. That's getting on me, too. What the hell is going on? Oh, you got a swapper, too. Wow. I'm waiting for it You're to waiting. come over here. <laughs> did you seek medical treatment? I did not. Mr. Cody, I'm going to wrap up this case because I really understand it. I believe I understand it. What I don't understand is why... And this doesn't require an answer. It's sort of a rhetorical question. Why you would want to take someone who had been a lifelong friend and someone with whom you were having a child and put either one or both of them in a situation so they don't know each other, really, so they don't know whether to like each other or not to like each other. I mean, I assume that 
At this point, you would, at least Miss Serrano was planning a long-term relationship with you, and she's having a child, and I assume she thinks you're going to be there to be supportive of the child. Maybe. You have other sure. children? Yes, I do. How many children do you have? I have uh, another son. Okay, how old? Five years old, five. And he lives with his mother? Yes, he does. So you see... Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a pesky one. I'm usually good at it. I missed it before. <laughs> I don't know why you would put them in a situation where they would dislike each other all to satisfy your ego. Wow. Oh, that's, well, that's exactly what you did. You put them in a position where two apparently nice ladies, both of whom care about you in different ways, you put them... Well, do you care about him? Yes. You think she cares about him? She, I've never, the entire time I was with They just know each other for a long time. So, way care, before me, so I guess if you would have felt like that. And they also went to just senior a sec, prom together. Just a second. Wow, like they I didn't ask you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't ask you anything. This is not a shout out. What I'm telling you is it goes to his character. He knows her for a long time. They never had a romantic relationship. With you, he's had a romantic relationship. You did something that annoyed him. You went back to take care of your sick mother, which also attests to his bad character. And then what he does is he invites a woman to come into the house, lets you know about it, because he knows that it's going to irritate you. That's exactly what happened. He acknowledges that. That doesn't make him a good guy. So I want you to think about that. But I absolutely believe that you caused a scratch on her, which you can't do. Anyway, Mr. Cody, you owe her $750. And Miss Serrano, you can't put your hands on anybody, no matter how angry you are at them. And I'm awarding her $1,000 for you putting your hands on her. Okay. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I was very satisfied. I mean, I knew it would cause havoc, but... Uh, Different women every night. I try to keep it in secret. And that's why we stopped being friends before, but... I definitely learned my lesson. I feel like it's unfortunate. I feel like she manipulated the whole situation. The friendship is over. It's going to be a father to my child, man. After working with you now for almost a year, I'm starting to get so jaded from these cases that I'm starting to think that just staying single might be my best option right. <laughs> if these are the alternatives. Yeah. Just blows my mind. He admitted to just pitting an old friend and your fiance, who's pregnant with your child, against each other. To sounds satisfy like, your ego. Yes. Sounds like a terrible idea, was a terrible idea, turned out to be a terrible idea, and it'll land you in court on occasion. You're right, but rethink that staying single. Bree Marshall are suing their neighbors, Joseph and Jennifer Fugate, for an insurance deductible and filing a false police report. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case number 2074, Marshall versus Fugate. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, you live across the street from Mr. Fugate and his mother. Yes. How long have you lived in your house? 22 years. And Mr. Fugate, how long have you lived in your house? Your Honor, my mom has lived in the house far longer than I have. She's lived in it since 2008. I moved in in 2016. Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, this problem that I'm going to try to rectify today deals with parking space. Yes. Yeah. And the parking space is a public parking space, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And it's on the street, and the public parking space happens to be in front of your home. Yes, ma'am. You live across the street. Yes, ma'am. And the case involves acrimony that has developed because you, Mr. Fugate, would like to keep that spot that's in front of your home, free for your mother, who you say, for health reasons, it would be more convenient for her to park right in front of the house. Yes, ma'am. And Mr. and Mrs. Marshall sometimes, or always, park in that spot. That's what the problem is. Yes. yes. OK. And I assume you're going to speak for your husband for now? I can, yes. Do you want her to talk for you? Sorry. <laughs> He oh, you learned his lesson his well. Husband. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> you right. can speak, I just think for myself. Perfect. If she need to, she can. Perfect. You've been living there a long time. Did you have any trouble with the Fugate family about this parking space between 2008 and 2016? No. So before the son moved in, you Correct. had no problem. That's right. <laughs> Had you ever, 
just a second. Had you ever had discussions with Mrs. Fugate about parking in that spot before he came? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, Mrs. Fugate, did you understand what I said? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I want you to be very careful in your answer to me. Yes, ma'am. You've lived there for a long time. Yes, your son didn't move in until 2016. Before your son moved in, did you ever have any communication with Mr. and Mrs. Marshall about parking in front of your house? Ma'am, she didn't park in front of my house before my son moved in. Okay. So is that correct? That's correct. Can you tell me what changed after her son moved in? Okay, where I park at is actually across the street from the field gates. It's right by my driveway. And I park my Toyota Avalon right beside my driveway, which is the parking spot that Mr. Fugate is causing the problems over. So it's the parking spot is in front of your house? No, it's not in front of my house. It's beside my driveway. But on your side of the house? That's on correct. your side of the street? No. Yes. Correct. No. Do they have a parking space in front of their house on their side of the street? Yes, ma'am. Do you ever park there? I have when they took the parking space I usually park in. I did park across the street. Okay. So occasionally either Mr. Fugate, his mother, parks on your side of the street, on a public street, and you'll park in front of their house. Correct. Okay. I got it. Okay. So let me tell you all this. We're going to finish part of the case right now. Too bad. You can park wherever you want on a public street because there are other visitors that come, I assume, for people who live on the block, that they take up parking spaces, and occasionally there aren't other parking spaces. You know, there's no question you would prefer to park on your side of the street, and you would prefer to park on your side of the street. If you can't, you can't. Mr. Fugate, I'm just telling you, just so that you know, mm -hmm. you have no right to a public parking space. Yes, I understand that, Your Honor. I'm not the one that needs to be told that, though. You have no right to a public parking space. Yes, ma'am. Where do you live in what state? Ohio, Cincinnati. Okay. I've actually been to Cincinnati oh. frequently. But I am certain that there is no regulation in Ohio or any city or town thereof that says, well, you sort of had first dibs on the parking space on the public street that's in front of your house. That's ridiculous. The best that Cincinnati has, Your Honor, is a three-day law that if the vehicle doesn't move within three days, then it could be towed by the city. But that's the best that they have. You live across the street from each other. Did either of you ever call the police and say a car has been there for more than three days? Yes, Your Honor. Who did? I did, Your Honor. Why? Because the, the spot in question that's directly across the street is actually, it's hindering to the entire flow of the neighborhood and where everybody parks on the street. I served 10 years Army, and um, I fight for, I fought for people. I, I listen, I don't care if you're a good person, if you're not a good person, if you're a do-gooder, if you're not a do-gooder, it's a public street. And if what you're suggesting to me is they should be nice, these, it's an older person and they shouldn't park in that spot, and what, what I'm telling you is I wouldn't start up with anybody by calling the police on a car that I, especially a car that I knew. I know that it's my neighbor's car. They've been living there for 22 years, relatively peacefully. <laughs> relatively peacefully. It hasn't really been peaceful, Your Honor. You moved there. Yes, I did. They were living there a decade before you moved there. You. Yes, ma'am. If it wasn't peaceful, there are options. You're a free person. But I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I cannot imagine my calling the police on a neighbor's car that was parked in the street. Well, that created problems. OK, so I see where we're going. We're going to get to this case. Reimbursement for insurance deductible, that's one thing. Because you claim that Mr. Fugate yes, damaged your car. Yes, ma'am. On what date? That was on June the 26th. Of this year? Of 21, I'm sorry. OK. Do you have any video evidence of the damage to your car? No, ma'am. All I okay. have is a picture. Tell me how he damaged the car. With what did he damage the car? OK. He damaged the car with his hand. 
I'm parking the car. You mean in front of? In front of uh, Mrs. Fugate's home. Cool. So on her side of the street? Yes, ma'am. I exit the car. Mr. Fugate is, is being a radical. No, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me what your perception of... Tell me what he did. He was beating the hood out of the car. He came up to the car and was hitting the top of the yes, car? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now I'll see the car and the police report. See the dent? And that's the hood of the car. Okay. Okay, as this police report says, Mr. Fugate told the police in his narrative that this incident occurred, there was a disagreement over the parking space, and that you struck him with the car, causing minor injury. Okay, because you have a cross complaint for that. That is correct. Okay. So, that's a simple. June 26th, I see the car was damaged. There's no question it was damaged by somebody pounding on the hood, and I assume that was you. Ma'am, that's wrong. I did not pound on the hood. Well, then tell me, Mr. Fugate, how these dents occurred, just the way they look, on the hood of the car. Your Honor, there is a... I have the 911 audio calls of the night, as well as the police report, and I also drew up a diagram where she was originally parked that explains everything. But... OK, so I'd like to see that. Um, OK. Ma'am, if I could approach the diagram. Absolutely. June 20... Sixth. On June 26th, I was talking to my parents when the marshals came home. My car was parked right here, okay? They came home, they blocked their own driveway, and parked right up on top of my bumper. Just a second. I... Just a second. So you, Mr. Fugate, were parked on a public street where you could park on their side of the street, not your side of the street, okay? Yes, sir. And they came up blocking their own driveway. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Did you see them? Were you in the house watching? No, I was on my parents' porch. Okay. So now you're on your parents' porch. They're in their car and they block their own driveway. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Not a big so, ordeal, right? Not any of your business. Right. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a problem wasn't to any, me. Wasn't, wasn't any of your but, business. Exactly. So Go ahead. anyway, I'm talking to my parents on the phone. They're just getting done um, working. I can hear that the marshals are upset about where I'm parked at on a public street. And I went out to save my parents' spot because I could hear her say, I'm going to teach him a lesson. So, Mr. Fugate, now, is what you're telling me that that car where you're standing, you went out to make it so that they could not park on a public street? Is that what you're telling me? The answer is yes. yes, yes. You got off the porch to stand in the street to block them from moving in front of your house because your car was parked on their side of the street. No, just, just, no Your Honor. No, you got that is, wrong. Just, is that red car yours? The red car is mine. It's mine. Yes, Your Honor. Just to say, the red car is yours. Listen, I'm not a moron. I know that. The white car, the white car is the space that you wanted to save for your parents. Yes, Your Honor. They were on their way home. Who I was gives to a rat's behind where they were? Now you have this both This whole area was clear. And there is a crossing road that comes all the way through here, and they could have parked. Who made you the monitor of public parking? No one. Who do you think you are to be the monitor of public parking? Jerry and Jeffrey Marshall claim their neighbors, Joseph and Jennifer Fugate, owe for an insurance deductible and filing a false police report. Joseph and Jennifer are countersuing for medical bills from an assault. Now, you went out on a public street to go like this to save a parking space for your parents. Yes, sir. That you had no right to do. Let me just understand this. You had no right to go out there. You parked on their side of the street, and then you went outside to save the spot because your parents were on their way home. Yeah, not... Just a second. You have no right to do that. Zero. Don't, don't you understand that? 
No, actually, I don't understand that, Your Honor. How do I not have a right to save a spot? You do not have a right to save a public... Parents. Just a second. You don't have that right, because I'm here to tell you, you don't have a right to save a spot on a public street by standing in the street like this. Don't park here. And I'm you have... Like this. I don't care. I don't care whether you were hopping on one foot and chewing gum. You don't have the right to save a spot and... It makes it twice as obnoxious because you parked on their side of the street. Now, if there was a spot in front of their house that they could park in and they said, no, I'm going to park in front of the defendant's house, I could say, you know what? That nasty. Well, that's... The Just that thing, nasty. Now you have this both spots. This whole area was clear, OK? And there is a crossing road that comes all the way through here and they could have parked... Who made you the, the monitor of public parking? No one. Who do you think you are to be the monitor of public parking? Get back. Yes, sir. Okay, so now, Mr. Monitor of Public Parking, you come out and you're standing in the street to save the spot. She comes around to park there, right? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me what happened. Well, um, she came around to park there and then she hit me with her car. Just a second. She came around to park there and you were standing in the street. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, pay careful attention. Where did she hit you in the car before you moved? She hit me... In the knee. Your... In the knee. And so you jumped out of the way. No, no. I fell on her car. I guess I was talking on the phone, and when she hit me in the knee, I fell on her car. Baloney! I... That's not what this is. What was the damage to your car? The damage? That's baloney. That didn't happen because you were... your elbow went on her car. Sir, if she hit you on the knee, she hit you on the knee with the front of her car, which is possible. By the way, you have medical records to show me? I I'd like to see them. The record should reflect that they closed this case, made no arrests in this case, and to probably told everybody to behave themselves, which is what I'm doing. I apologize. Okay. What is this? That is the ambulance bill for... I want to see a medical record. I don't care if you went in an ambulance. I want to see what the doctor reported about your injury. Where is that? I was unable to get that. Well, that's too bad. Then I'm not interested in this. That's nonsense. Okay, how much did it cost to fix your car? Here we are. Thank you. And you had a $500 deductible? Yes, ma'am. $500 so far for the plaintiff. The counterclaim that talks about medical bills for this is dismissed. Okay, filing a false police report. Yes, ma'am. And the false police report you're talking about is what? Mrs. Fugate initiated a confrontation with me. When? December the 22nd. I'm on my way to my vehicle. Mrs. Fugate is parked maybe like 10 feet behind me. Put up the diagram again, please. Okay, just go over to the board. This is a different date. But I yes. just want you to show me where she was and where you were. Okay. Mrs. Fieldgate was parked right about here. She parked right about there, which is opposite your house. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm parked here. In front of her house. Correct. Okay. So you're both on the same side of the street, which is the defendant's side of the street. You're parked across the street from your house. That's correct. Got it. Go ahead. Okay. What happened? And Mrs. Fugate, she comes out of her car. She's walking towards me. She's upset. She's yelling. And I don't remember all of the words that she was saying, but it was about parking. She was telling me I couldn't park where I was parked at. She's yelling. She's screaming. I'm trying okay. to reason with her. Could you step back there? Yes. I'm trying to reason with Miss Fugate. I'm telling her it's a public street and I can park there. She's yelling and screaming and telling me that I can't. We're standing in front of one another. She's still yelling and screaming. I'm trying to reason with her. Next thing I know, she hits me on the hand. My reflux, I pushed her back. Next thing I know, she's still Sorry. standing after I push. Next thing I know, I guess she thought about it, and then she made herself fall on the ground. Well, I don't know whether she did or not. Somebody right. said with regard to this that there's a video of this. Video. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It was dismissed in, in every... court. It wasn't shown in, in the... court. I, I don't care whether it's shown in court or not. I would like to see, because uh, I read here that there is a security video of it's what happened cam. on 
If it's a video, you don't have to go up there, Miss Fugate, because I can actually see it myself. So now, those are the two cars parked on the same side of the street, and they are parked on the defendant's side of the street. Yes, ma'am. And your car is the... Black car. Your car is the black car. Their car is the red car. That's correct. And that's Miss Fugate getting out of her car. Okay, yes, now I'd like to see the video. She started to move up. So I thought I'd move my car a little closer. Shh! Don't speak. That's when she... Shh. Okay, I'm gonna see that again, please. And I'd like you to do it slowly at some point when they're right in each other's faces and getting very nasty. Oh, no, no, Miss Marshall, you can't do that. It wasn't my intention. Oh, just a second. She oh, it was absolutely your intention. No, it, it was, was absolutely not. your intention, and there no. was... Listen, you know, I'm an equal opportunity abuser. You can't do that. You can't do what I just saw. What I just saw is unreasonable behavior and totally inconsistent to being... Maybe, which I didn't see, slapped on the hand. Right. Maybe slapped on the hand. I didn't see it. But I did see you give her a substantial shove, and she is a person who has a certain infirmity, and she fell. And if she fell, and if she was injured, you're responsible. That's it. I saw you give her a shove that didn't, as you say, she decided to fall back down. No, madam. You hit her with such force that she fell backward. You, you say no, you I say yes, say yes. I'm a judge, I win. Jerry and Jeffrey Marshall have accused their neighbors, Joseph and Jennifer Fugate, of damaging their car. Jennifer claims she was assaulted by Sherry over a parking spot. Now, I saw the video. I don't have to have your mother testify. You should have not created an incident, Mrs. Fugate. I did Yes, not. no, yes, just a second. Yes, you did. I was walking toward the car, he... and I was to go to my car and pull up because she was starting to pull her car up. If you look, she started to pull her car up first. And then when she come around the car, she's holding her cell phone yelling, I got you, I'm recording, I'm recording you because I'm going to show you a hate crime. Excuse just me. Just a second. Part of the problem is you and your son have to understand that you have no right to the parking spaces that are on a public street, to just a second, in front of your house. And your son clearly is a provocateur in this because he parks his car on their side of the street. I'm not getting... So what I'm doing is I am dissecting this case. If I have two unreasonable people, they're going to continue to make each other's lives miserable, and I can't control that. All I can do is hear each individual side. So, Mrs. Fugate, I have already said that Miss Marshall had no right, based upon what I saw, to push you with such force that you fell. I would like to see the medical report after the incident of December 22nd. May I see it, Kevin? I was in the ER. Okay. And I had to wear a brace for a month on my arm and shoulder. Did you have any out-of-pocket expense? I paid $900 because it was Christmas holidays. I, all I want to know is, did you have any out-of-pocket expense? Yes, Your Honor. And yes, I had... Shh! What is this? It's I had to have a woman come in and clean oh, my house. Oh, I don't care about that. That was out of... I don't care about that. Return that to her. That's a cleaning bill for somebody to come in and clean. Let her clean. Okay. So, filing a false police report and false arrest. Who was arrested? I was. And you were arrested, in my judgment, legitimately, because of based upon what I saw. So, I'm that, dismissing... That is not why they arrested oh, me. Oh, okay. So, 
That is not the reason that you were arrested was not this. The reason why I was arrested yeah. is because when she hit me and when I Bring pushed her back, when they asked me what happened, I did not tell them that she had struck me. Ms. Marshall, is the reason you were arrested based upon the occurrence of December 22nd? That's yes, easy. It, yes, it was. Well, that's what I said. So don't say no. The reason you were arrested and claim falsely but I, is as a result of the December 22nd incident. But I was cleared. I don't care whether you were cleared or not. I didn't clear you. The burden of proof in a criminal case is proof by beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? That is not the burden of proof in a civil proceeding. It's a much lower standard. I looked at that video. I believe that your conduct was unconscionable. And not hers. You didn't see I think that her you behavior was... Her I think that her behavior was stupid. I don't... Yeah. Just a second. I don't see her hitting you. I see you walking away, Miss Marshall. I see you walking away, but I saw you give her a shove that, as you say, she decided to fall back down. No, madam. You hit her with such force that she fell backward. You, you say no, you I say yes. Say yes. I'm a judge, I win. So you, on your case, I said, absolutely. I don't believe him. I don't believe that the damage to your car resulted from his putting his elbow on it. I told him, you have absolutely no right to save the space for your parents. I'm the awarding... The case is malicious. Okay. From what Fine. you saw him do, that's what she did. She installed okay. a camera, set me up, manured me in front of the camera. She knew what she was doing when she hit me on the hand. You're okay, right. very... Oh, Shh, she knew. Just a second. Just a second. All of it is just malicious. Just a second. It's not your judgment that I'm concerned about, madam. I'M TELLING YOU, BASED UPON WHAT I SAW, I'M AWARDING that. MRS. FUGATE, WHO I THINK SHE AND HER SON BOTH HAVE TO UNDERSTAND WHAT A PUBLIC STREET IS, I'M AWARDING HER $2,000 ON HER COUNTERCLAIM FOR HER INJURIES AS A RESULT OF THE ASSAULT. I'M DISMISSING PART OF YOUR CLAIM FOR FALSE ARREST. I AWARDED YOU the $500 THAT YOU ASKED FOR, FOR YOUR DEDUCTIBLE. YOU GOT YOUR $500. IT'S COMING OFF THE $2,000 THAT I'VE AWARDED MRS. FUGATE FOR HER INJURIES, JUDGMENT ON THE COUNTERCLAIM FOR $1,500. THANK YOU VERY MUCH. WE'RE DONE. THIS COURT IS ADJOURNED. I WOULDN'T HAVE NEVER MALICIOUSLY PUSHED ANYBODY. I'VE BEEN TRYING TO TELL THIS STORY FOREVER. I DIDN'T KNOW WHAT ELSE SHE WAS GOING TO DO. I WAS TRYING TO PROTECT MYSELF. IT REALLY DOES HARDEN ME THAT THERE ARE PEOPLE OUT THERE that could go and just do this. I have always been friendly. I never bother anyone. They keep bothering us. We're really hoping that this does resolve the issue. I just want them to leave us alone. Bring them to Judy Justice. Because she Justice really does so. care. You want to know how I know that the plaintiff wasn't being truthful when she said that I wasn't being malicious, it was an accident, I did not push her that hard. If that had happened to me, and I was just trying to get someone away from me, and that reaction from the defendant of falling back, I thought she almost cracked her head on the curb. I would have said, I'm so sorry, oh my goodness, I would have gone down to her, I didn't mean to push you, let me, let me help you up. The plaintiff just walked right back to her car, and you could see her face almost had a smirk on it, just walked right back to her car like she didn't even care. And that, to me, says you knew exactly what you were doing when you yeah. put your hands on that woman. Yeah. And I didn't see a slap. It could have happened. I, it was I said too... it could have happened. It could have happened. But I just didn't it see did, it. That reaction it was, was an overreaction. 18-year-old Bella North and her mother, Angela North, are suing business owner Heather Olson for car damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2092. North versus Olson. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. North, this is your daughter. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you have a seat? Because you actually weren't involved nor a witness to the incident. That's Are you the owner of the car? No, ma'am. Okay. Why don't you have a seat? Tell me your first name. Bella. Bella. Bella, from what I gather from reading the papers, you and the defendant's daughter were good friends. Yes, still are. And have been friends for a very long time. So, not a very difficult case. You were going to visit Ms. Olson's daughter, Lotus. Yep. And according to you, you've done that innumerable times in the past. You were also 17 at the time? Yes. You went to visit Lotus, to trying to find the date in your complaint, if I on may... April 16th of 2022. Yes. And when you got 
to the house, which you had done many, many times before. According to you, you parked behind the defendant's car. Yes, I did. Was the defendant in her car at the time you parked your car? I did not see the car on when I pulled up behind it. I turned around for a moment to gather my things to my backpack, my charger, everything. I then look up and I see the car is on. I never saw anyone, I never you saw never anyone. You never saw anyone get in the car? Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, could you tell me what kind of car were you driving? A 2001 Honda Accord. So a very small car? Yes, sedan. And you were in a large car, Miss Olson? Your car is a large car. Yes, a large... What kind of car is it? It's a Suburban. Now, can you tell me why you parked behind her car? If you parked mm -hmm. behind her car, you were blocking her in. Yes. So I parked behind her car because Lotus has told me in the past... You can't tell me anything that Lotus told you. Okay. I parked behind her car so that the driveway to my left was free for people to come in and out because I am aware that she does have residence in her home, and I was... But that means that she couldn't get her car out if you were parked right behind her. Correct. Okay. Now, is there parking on the street, Mrs. Olson? Yes, Your Honor. May I see that? No, yes. I don't want to. Thank you. May I describe what is in the photo? Well, I'm just asking you, is there on-street parking here or not? It's not laid out, but you're, you're allowed to park on the street. We have also additional parking next door at the neighbors. They've invited us to park. No, you can't tell me that they okay, invited yes, you. Sorry. I'm just asking whether Miss North could have parked someplace else. And the answer is she could have. It was more convenient to park behind your Suburban. Now, as you turned around to gather your backpack, according to your complaint, you felt something hit your car, your 21-year-old car, right? Yes. Would you look up 2001 Honda? Where did you get the car from? I got it from a small dealership in my town, Sarasota. Who purchased it? I did. For how much? $3,000. Okay. And you felt something hit your car? Yes. And then you looked up, according to what I read, and you saw the backup lights on? Yes. I looked up, saw the reverse lights on, waited, saw the car back up into me, hit my car, I honk, the car f stops, the car then continues to reverse again, hitting my car, I honk, I honk, they stop. I then turn back on my car, I reverse away so she can get out, and then she proceeds to leave. Okay. And show me what the damage was to your car. Yes, ma'am. The Kelly Blue Book value is 2500 to 3500 so right in the range. Great. What is this, a picture of? The two scratches and the dent. Let me see the whole car. I do not have a picture of my whole car. Well, that's unfortunate. I so, see a scratch. I don't know if it's a scratch. I see some... There's a hole towards the corner of the light that was not there before. My whole light is... You mean this? Mm-hmm. Yep. See where there's a gap in the light is supposed to be collided with the bumper, and it's not. Mm -hmm. It was hit and damaged. Okay. Did you see her car when you came out? No, Your Honor. She didn't see you, so you were in the car, I assume, when she pulled up behind you. Do you understand? So she was in her car, in her driveway, when you pulled up in your car and blocked her car in. If you had seen her in the car, would you have parked behind her? No. So you didn't look to see whether she was in her car? No. no. And she was in her car, and her car is high. You look up. We have a big Suburban. You don't expect anybody to be stupid enough to park behind your car. You're in your car already, because clearly she didn't see you pull up because she was in her car, right? Now I'm going to ask you, because you say you don't remember hitting something or you weren't sure you hit anything. Is that your answer that I'm getting? When my other daughter drove up, parked the vehicle, left it running, ran inside the house, I ran out and, of course, checked behind me and drove out. No. I asked you a question. You didn't... I did not... I did not hit anything. Well, you don't remember hitting anything. Correct, Your Honor. Yeah, because I don't think Miss North would have made up this story. You had a big car, backed out, and you drove away. Did you see her car pull off when you backed out? No, Your Honor. You did not? No, Your Honor. When she pulled out, did she go in the same direction as you did or the opposite direction? The same direction. Okay. Did you see her car after you pulled out? 
No, Your Honor. Not until two hours later when we met. Tell me what happened two hours later. After returning from my appointment, I met Bella at the next door neighbors where we parked, and that's when we examined each other's vehicles. Well, did she call you? How did you find out that there was an accusation that you would hit her car? Because we met at the designating parking spots that we've agreed to park at. And so not... there was just serendipitous that you met there at the same time, or had you been in communication either with her or your daughter? I was at a brief appointment, and when I returned home, that's where I parked. And Bella also parked there because that is where we. Okay, parked. so when you so moved this... your car after the defendant, according to you, hit your car, did you park in another spot? Yes. Did you park in the neighbor's spot? I did. Okay, so that would indicate to me that you were aware that you were supposed to or could, if there were other cars in it, park in the neighbor's spot, because otherwise I wouldn't park in a neighbor's house. So you were aware you could park there. I'm never sure when the neighbors are home or not, and I don't feel comfortable parking at a neighbor's house. But you house. did park in the neighbor's spot after this happened on April 16th. You did not pull back into Miss Olson's driveway. You pulled into the neighbor's spot. I did. And then you went into the house to visit Lotus, right? Yes. Now, Lotus didn't witness this, I assume? No. When you met in the neighbor's spot, did you show Miss Olson the damage? I did. We didn't meet there. We met outside of her house as I was leaving Lotus's house and she was going in. I confronted her about it and then... Tell me what you said when you say you confronted her. Tell me what you said to her. That's the question. I said, are you aware that you hit something earlier? That was my car. Do you want to go check it out? Is that the conversation that you had with her outside? No, Your Honor. Are you trying to tell me that it happened earlier in the year and your dogs just found the hole they had never been out before? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I don't believe that, sir. Seventeen-year-old Bella North and her mother, Angela North, claim business owner Heather Olson owes for car damage. Okay, tell me what you said when you say you confronted her. Heather knew that she... Don't tell me what she knew. Okay. Tell me what you said to her. That's the question. I said, are you aware that you hit something earlier? That was my car. Do you want to go check it out? And she said? Yes. Of course. And? And then she did. She said, okay, the damage will probably be at least $600. And then she told me to go to an auto body shop, which I did. And she told me to get an estimate, which I did. And that was that. Okay. Is that the conversation that you had with her outside? No, Your Honor. Tell me your version of the conversation that you had with her. Will you acknowledge that you met her? Yes. When Bella and I met outside, she came at me accusing me of hitting her Don't vehicle. Come to Sorry. Tell me what she said to you and you said to her. She did say that I hit her vehicle and asked me to look at her vehicle damage. Immediately, I agreed to go look at both vehicles. And we looked at both vehicles. We both took photos of both vehicles. There was minor damage all the way around her vehicle. And I could not see any damage on mine. And I could not understand. Just a second. Yes. Did you look at her vehicle no. at that time? Why not? We never looked at her vehicle. We only looked at mine. Well, she drove in in her vehicle. Yes. Why wouldn't you look at her vehicle? It was about my vehicle. We were no, it concerned was... with my damage. It was your damage, but you were contributorily negligent. I understand that, yeah. Well, you'd understand that, so you'd want to look at her vehicle, too. Did you ever have a conversation with her and say to her, take her to a body shop? Yes, Your Honor, that is true. Okay. I said, go ahead and see if they can find any damage that could have been caused by an accident like that, because I didn't believe it, and I didn't remember ever hitting her, and I thought it would be more like $200. Uh, Bella did come back with an invoice for six or $700, and then, and that, then? Was, that was shocking to me because I couldn't believe that there was any damage just from that. So it turned out that the body work she was going to have done was basically her entire bumper and both headlights, which is, it which seems is like not, a lot. Which is not the damage that even assuming arguendo that you caused, she only showed me a picture of one headlight. Yes, Can I see the estimate that you have? Do you want all three or just the one that she What do you want to tell me, Lotus? I was a witness to that conversation. Oh, I'd like to hear it. Yes. Stand uh up, move over. Are you living at home? Mm, no longer. When did you move out? I would say the second week of June. 
Did you have a fight with your mother about this event? No, no. I did not want to get Great. involved. Great. Okay, tell me exactly what you heard your mother say. She said, this is my auto parts place, and if you go there, I will pay for those damages. Okay, do you remember that conversation? Basically, that's correct, that I said, go to this bodywork person that I know, because I thought he'd see that's silly and well, okay. turn her away. <laughs> but your daughter was making a statement. Is that the statement? Go to my body shop and I'll take care of it. Yes. Okay, fine. Can I see the receipt that makes it? Have a seat, please. This says customer pay zero, insurance pay seven ninety five. In my historical brain of information, an estimate from a body shop when they believe insurance is going to pay for it is always a little bit inflated. Did you have your car fixed? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. You agreed to pay for the damage. That's what you agreed to. I will tell you, if you had not agreed to pay for the damage, I would find the plaintiff 50% responsible for this accident. She was as negligent as you were in hitting her car, and I do believe that you hit her car. So absent an agreement by you to pay for the damage, I would actually split this between the two of you and find the plaintiff 50% contributorily negligent. But since you agree to pay for the damage and you acknowledge you agree to pay for the damage, I must rely on this bill, which is $795. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you. Thank Court you. is adjourned. I don't think it caused too much friction as we were never that close. Still in shock. Obviously, I'm still close with her daughter, so it hasn't caused too much friction. I agreed with your judgment to give the plaintiff a little bit of money, but I'm not so sure on the contributory negligence reasoning. I agree that parking behind someone's vehicle is never ideal, but if you're going to operate a motor vehicle, you have to check your surroundings. I think that people have to be more careful when they're driving. People have driving. to be vigilant, but you know, just because there's an accident doesn't mean it has to be always someone's fault. Sure. That's why they invented the doctrine of contributory mm -hmm. negligence. I actually think it was just lazy of the plaintiff to park in a spot. She wasn't paying attention to her surroundings because she didn't see the defendant in her car. The defendant ran into her car, didn't see the little car behind. I believe that they were equally responsible. But for the agreement mm -hmm. that the defendant made, I would not have awarded her the whole thing. I would have awarded her 50%. Seemed like just a case of blind spots and bad timing. Bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Case 2078, Ali versus Miller. All parties, please step forward. Syed Ali is suing dog owner Abram Miller for car damage from a dog attack. Mr. Ali, you bought yourself a Tesla. Yes, ma'am. A new one? Yes. When did you buy it? I bought it on 6th of June. Of this year? Yes. How much did you pay for it, sir? 68. And there was a loan on the car? There's a loan on the car, yes. So you have full insurance on the car? Yes. What's your deductible? Deductible is $1,000. A thousand. Yes. This is what your case is about. You were going to check on a child's house of yours. Yes, ma'am. It's my, my son's house. I go there every day. We bought that house for my, uh, on my son's and my name. It's for my... Oh, so it's a house that's jointly owned by you and your son. Yes, ma'am. But you don't live there regularly. I don't live there. And where does Mr. Miller live? Uh, he lives on a different street, but his backyard and my backyard, they meet each other in the back. How long have you owned that house? Uh, since uh, 2014. Long time. Long time. Have you met Mr. Miller? I met him a few times, yes. Mr. Miller, you recall meeting Mr. Raleigh? Yes, ma'am, once. OK, but you've met him? Yes, ma'am. Before June 6th? Yes, ma'am. And your son lives in the house. Anybody else live in the house? You live Raleigh's in the house. Is this a tenant in the house? She's a tenant. Yes. Does your son have dogs? No. And does the tenant have a dog? She does. What kind of dog? A Yorkie. Has, you have a Yorkie? Yes. It's a small dog. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you have one Yorkie in the house. And you have yeah. two dogs? Yes, ma'am. What kind? A pit bull breed. Pit bull? Yes, ma'am. And the other? No, both are the same. Both are the same. One's actually the mom and the son. And how old are they? The mom's 10, the son's about 8. And you've had them for years? Since they were born. So June 16th, you go to check on the house. Yes. Tell me what you saw when you pulled up to the house. When I went there to the house to check my mail, I saw two dogs. Where did you see the I two dogs? I saw them in the porch. On your porch? Yes. Okay. Had you ever seen those dogs before? No, I never saw them before. 
Could you describe them for me? They're a big size. There are black and white, and they're. You know. One was black and white, or both black and white? No, the one is black and white, and I have some pictures of them. Oh, you took photos? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you took photos of them on the porch, or initially when you saw them? After I saw them, I was walking out, then I took the picture. Okay, may I see the photograph? Take out the photographs of your dogs. Would you say, give me both photographs, please? I see. One is black. One is white. And one is fawn color and white. Are these pictures of your dogs? Those are pictures of my dogs. At his house? Yes, ma'am. OK. So, now, your dogs are out. You're not at his house, just your no, dogs. Just the dogs. OK. So, now I got it. So you took pictures of the dogs the day of this incident at your house? Yes. And these are your dogs? Yes, ma'am. OK. Tell me what happened with your car. Most states now exclude certain dogs from their policy. One that's right on top of the list are pit bulls. You are aware of that. Syed Ali claims dog owner Abram Miller owes fur car damage after his dogs attacked Syed's Tesla. Okay, tell me what happened with your car. Then I realized that I think maybe I need to get away from them because they were very ferocious and growling. And I quietly walked away from them, go to my car, lock myself in, and I said, I need to get out. So I, I, I saw them, they were jumping all around my car and biting everything. They were biting what? Biting the right side of the tire, this side and the rim and all that. What your claim is, is that the dogs caused a substantial amount of damage to your car. Right. May I see the photographs of the damage? Yes, ma'am. So the car had scratches on it, I see. And what about the wheel rim? Is that... You're also showing me the scratches on the wheel rim? Yes, they, they, they were biting all the rims and the tire, and they went into the front and bit on the bumper. May what? I see that? Okay. Have you seen the pictures? Yes, ma'am. He sent you pictures of damage. He sent me to the some pictures. Pictures yes, of the damage. Okay. So now, Mr. Miller, what Mr. Ali is saying is that your dogs, who he has pictures of, that you acknowledge are your dogs, yes, ma'am, caused damage to his car that he had for a week, that he paid almost seventy thousand dollars for. The dogs were clearly outside of your control. They were out of your control because you acknowledge that the photographs of them are without collars, without leashes, nobody around them, and the photographs are taken at his house. I'd like to hear a defense. Your Honor, there was no way for my dogs to have done the damage. My dogs are older. One of them has no teeth. We have to put water and stuff on her food just so she can eat. The other dog's teeth are filed down. Both of them are up in age. My dogs have never harmed anyone. I have... 10 cars of my own in my yard, and I've never had my dogs biting any tires, any damage. Mr. Miller. Yes, ma'am. That's why they call dogs dogs. They're animals. Yes, ma'am. Because on one dog, it looks as if the incisors are filed down a little bit. Still has teeth, but the incisors are filed down. Is what you're telling me that that was a natural process or you had them filed down? No, ma'am. Absolutely not. So no, shush. Absolutely not what? Absolutely it, natural. Absolutely natural. OK, so the dogs still have teeth. They are smoother rather than sharp, but they still have teeth. OK, but that's why they're dogs. You weren't there to witness this, so I have to assume that what the plaintiff tells me is true, because his evidence is consistent with that. He has photographs of your dogs outside of your control, no collar, no leash, at his house. And he said that he took those pictures on the date of the incident, and he has damage to his car. Now, if somebody has that problem, they don't want to blame the wrong person. And the dogs he's identified as causing the damage are your dogs. I'm still waiting for a defense. You mean the fact that they've never done it before you think is a defense? No, ma'am, not... What were they doing outside of your control? They actually got out of my yard from a previous tenant of his dogs. 
that dug a hole up under my gate. Just a second. So a previous tenant of his had a dog. I had several dogs. More several than... dogs. Yes, doesn't live there anymore. Dug a hole under the fence. When did that happen? That was earlier that year. Okay, and when did you first discover it? I didn't realize it until after this incident. Are you trying to tell me that it happened earlier in the year and your dogs just found the hole they had never been out before? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I don't believe that, sir. You're responsible for his deductible. Did you have the car fixed? No, no not yet, ma'am. Why I got not? A, I, I have an estimate, and I approached him of that, and I said, let's see if we can do something about this. Mr. Ali. Yes, sir. You yes, have insurance. Yes. And you have insurance for this type of problem. Yes, Judge. And you have a $1,000 deductible. Yes, Judge. Did you advise your insurance company? I wasn't, because I was trying to see what my good friend neighbor wants to do. Do you own your home? Yes, ma'am. Do you have homeowner's insurance? Yes, ma'am. Does the homeowner's insurance exclude your pit bulls? Do they exclude them? I'm not sure. Well, in what state do you live? Florida. In Florida. Would you look up and see what's the name of your insurance carrier? I'm not sure, Your Honor. I just switched um, insurance companies. What, did you have insurance, homeowner's insurance, in June? Yes, ma'am. You did? Absolutely. Well, did you inform your insurance company that there was a problem? No, ma'am. Why not? Because I was trying to get an understanding of what was going I'm on. I'm just telling you what's going on. So now you know what's going on. Your dogs cause damage to his car. Most states now exclude certain dogs from their policy. One that's right on top of the list are pit bulls. You are aware of that. Yes, ma'am. And either you pay a higher premium or the insurance company says we're not insuring them. You do understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now you understand. Does your policy exclude your pit bulls? I don't think so. No, ma'am. Well, I don't know, and I don't know how to find that out unless you can give me a definitive answer, Sarah. It depends upon the insurance company. It does. Yeah, and you don't remember your insurance company. So, Mr. Raleigh, he's not paying the $8,000 that it's going to take to fix your car. That's what you have insurance for. Okay? But he's going to pay the deductible. You have insurance. It's a brand new car because you have a loan. So you must have insurance, which I'm sure you do. Yes, I do. Then if you were having a difficult time with Mr. Miller and his insurance, which I could probably understand because it may exclude his dogs from the policy, you have to advise your insurance company. And I don't understand why you didn't do that. But I was going to see if he wants to go ahead and fix it. Because... Well, he's not paying $8,000 to fix it. He's going to pay the $1,000 deductible on your policy. He was suggesting me that he could just go and get his spray paint and paint that little thing. And I, I, I didn't like that idea. And I said, let's go to Tesla and have it done by the properly from... Absolutely. I agree with you. It's a brand new car. You should have it done by Tesla through your insurance. That's true. Yes. Good. Yes. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,000, which covers your deductible. We're finished. This court is adjourned. Animal Control said my dogs were so loving and peaceful, they showed no aggression to them. I mean, I like to have people as good neighbors. Even after they put the, the, the pole in, um, in the hoop around their necks, my dogs were wagging their tails. The neighbor's dog has damaged some damage to my car, and I want the neighbor to be up to that responsibility. The plaintiff bought a new Tesla and has a loan on the Tesla. When you have a loan on a car, you're required by the lender to maintain insurance, both collision and liability. This is not a malicious act, it was a careless act. Mm -hmm. And I think he should use his insurance to pay for it. I think it was fair. I don't think that there was an issue of fact, did you? No, I didn't. I think that that was fair because you have insurance for that purpose so that you don't have to pay $8,000 out of pocket to fix damage from an accident. So he should have used it. His brother, Randall Rubin, for unpaid expenses from their mother's funeral. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Good morning, Judge. Case number 2011, Rubin versus Rubin. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Rubin, this is your brother. Yes, it is, Your Honor. And this case involves sharing expenses for your mother's funeral. Correct. And it is your claim that your brother who I believe was living with your mother at the time she died... Right. ...agreed to pay half of the funeral expenses when he received proceeds from a small life insurance policy that your mother had left. Yes, Judge. Our mother only left us a $5,000 life insurance policy. That's what the case is about. Right. Your brother's position is it's not his responsibility. He made no such promise. Of course, you do understand that without that promise to pay for your mother's funeral expenses, children aren't normally responsible for the expenses of their parent. Do you understand that? Yes, Judge. 
Mr. Rubin, when did your mother pass away? She passed away August 20th of 2021. How old was she? She was 86. And how long had you been living with your mother? Uh, Your Honor, I took care of my mother since 1991. Well, if you were taking care of her for almost 30 years, sir, what kind of physical malady did she have when she was in her 50s? She suffered from chronic uh, kidney failure. When did that medical condition develop? Pretty close to 91. What is pretty close to 91? Beginning in the 90s, 91, 92, etc. So when you moved in with her, was your mother sick or was she not sick? She was sick. Did you live with your mother because it was not only good for your mother, but because it was good for you? That's Correct. what I'm trying to get yes. to. The answer is yes. yes and ma'am. you moved into your mother's house? Correct. That she owned or rented? She was uh, purchasing it through a mortgage. She owned her home? Yes, ma'am. Correct. Was she working in the 90s? She was. Therefore, she wasn't incapacitated to the extent that she needed full-time care. At the beginning, no, ma'am. When you moved in with her, she was employed on a full-time basis... ...sufficient enough to get a mortgage from a bank based upon her income. Correct. And what were you doing in 1991? I worked. For whom? Associates. For how long? Off and on from 91 till about two years ago. What does off and on mean? I had several jobs in between. I sold cars for various car dealerships, and I also owned several businesses. When you lived with your mother, who paid the mortgage? My mother did. Did you pay your mother for any expenses? Rent, gas, electric, phone? Uh, Or did you live there and you had an agreement? You lived there, she wanted your company, whatever it was. She lived alone? At the time, yes. In 1991, she was just living alone? Correct. And I assume, therefore, happy to have your company. Correct. I assume. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you made no payments to your mother? With the occasional help with some utilities or food, yes. Okay. So you were able, I assume, to save a substantial amount of money? Correct. Just for my own information, so that I can sort of put this thing together? Sure. You have stocks, bonds, savings? No, ma'am. What do you have? You were able to save a lot of money. How did you invest it? I invested in several businesses, which one is my liquidation company. What happened with your mother's house? When she passed, I was still residing at the house. I paid the mortgage by myself for the months of September 2021 as well as October 2021. And I remained there until, I want to say, February 2022. My sister is the executor of the estate, and she uh, sold it just recently for 465000 Okay. So what I'm gathering from you, you paid the mortgage, you say, in September and October, then you stopped paying the mortgage November, December, January, and February. That is correct, ma'am. But you lived in the house. I did. Rent-free. Because you paid nothing. Correct. Where are you living now? I live in Nogales, Mexico. And you live in a house? You live in a... In an apartment, ma'am. You pay rent? I do. Anybody live with you? No, ma'am. What's your rent? $250. And what was the mortgage payment in your mother's house? I paid $1,750 even. Are you the sister? Yes, Your Honor. Could you stand up for a second? I'm just getting some information. Tell me your name. Shannon Hayes. Ms. Hayes, house was sold recently for four sixty-five, dollars And what was left on the mortgage? $258,000 plus a $35,000 uh, third mortgage. Your Honor, since, Sarah, since Sarah, her Sarah, brother was Sarah, not Sarah, paying, Sarah, since he wasn't paying, the house actually went into foreclosure. Just and so we had to get... Just say, I didn't ask you anything. Okay, I'm just... Sarah Rose, four sixty-five less two fifty-eight. Two hundred and seven thousand, Your Honor. Less 35. 172. Okay, and there are three siblings? And also, Your Honor, there was a $10,000 lien on the property that had to be paid. So we're down to 162. Mm-hmm. Correct. So it's 162 clear, so a little over $50,000 a person. She owed the IRS, Your Honor, for back payments in excess of $54,000. She hadn't paid taxes in years. Did you pay the IRS? I just did. And how much did you pay the IRS? 54000 $188. Sarah, from 162, take out 54000 $108,000. Anything else? Yes, Your Honor. She had uh, Arizona state taxes, $3,000 I paid as well. 105 Is that 105 net? So we also have the medical, 
bills that I had to take care of. She had no insurance and she had to have Medicare. She did, Your Honor. That's her copayment. Okay. And what was her copayment? $3,000 in medical. Let's do a simple $100,000. Mm-hmm. How much were the funeral expenses? $2,434.73. Was the total funeral expense? Yes. Well, that's what you're claiming he owes you. That's his share of the... I want to know what the entire funeral costs, sir. You'll show me the invoice. Sure. I, I do have all the invoices for you. The first one, Your Honor, is just for the cremation. 1058. Correct. Okay. 1058. The next one should be from the cemetery. This is the total funeral home charges, and this is cremated remains internment of $2,200. Correct. The next invoice you should have, Your Honor, is from uh, services provided by a rabbi. Okay, that was $600. Your Honor, it was actually $700. I paid the rabbi $100 as an honorarium. No, that's $600. Whatever you want to pay him as an honorarium, that's fine. So the total expenses are $3,858. You should have another invoice for a uh, proposal for a headstone as well. $1,717. Yes, 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 Your Honor. $3,858 plus $1,717. $5,575. $5,575. That's it. Okay. I assume your mother died without a will. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. And you are the only surviving siblings? Yes, Your Honor. The estate will be divided into three parts. Correct. So each one of you will get about $33,000 from the estate after all of the expenses have been paid. There's also the real estate commission fees that we didn't mention to subtract from the net income. And what would the real estate commission fees? $30,000. Oh, that, yeah, that's a substantial amount. Yes, Your Honor. So 108 less 30, $78,000. So now you're down to $25,000 each. That's correct, Your Honor. What I'm trying to figure out is even giving you all those expenses that you paid, your mother's estate, absent this $5,000 life insurance policy that there was, correct? And you got a share of that life insurance policy. How much... Don't... Yes, the answer yes, is ma'am. yes. How much did you receive? 2500 even. Okay, 2500 Yes, ma'am. And did you get a share of that life insurance policy? No, Your Honor. Did you? Yes, Your Honor. I also received $2,500. Great. And the estate had net, 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 after everything, at least $75,000 divided by three, which is $25,000 apiece after you pay all expenses. Mm-hmm which in this case would have been funeral expenses. Do you understand where I'm coming from, sir? I do. I have children and grandchildren. Ten years is a long time. That's a grandchild. She didn't see me at least once a month. She better keep her fingers crossed that I don't change my will. (laughs) John Rubin. He's suing his brother, Randall Rubin, for unpaid funeral expenses. Randall is countersuing, claiming Sean defamed him. So now, if what you're asking me, Mr. Rubin, is to find that you had an agreement with your brother to pay one-third of the funeral expenses because the two of you each paid one-third of the funeral expenses. Is that what you did? Well, Your Just, Honor... That's, a, that's either a yes or a no. That, it is a no. I'm the only one that had the money to process our mother. He would not even sign to get her processed to continue the cremation. I have evidence here I'd like to submit to you where he agreed to pay me half of it out of his life insurance. Okay, that's all. I have all. text from if him. He, just a second. I'm going to take a look at it. You have to understand, Mr. Rubin, yes. that at this point, if I find that he agreed to pay for half, then you understand that you agreed to pay for half of her funeral. Ordinarily, the funeral expenses, you may front the money for those funeral expenses, but if the deceased had sufficient money in their estate to cover their last expenses, and those would be medical expenses, which you paid out of the estate, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Taxes, which you paid out of the estate. Yes, Your Honor. You paid out of the estate after you sold the house broker's fees. Mm -hmm. State tax fees, along with those kinds of fees, would be funeral expenses. Now, if the 
two of you agreed, or the two brothers agreed, which is what you're saying, that yes. he agreed to pay half, not a third, but he agreed to pay half of the funeral expenses for which you are not being reimbursed by the estate. Do you understand? Correct. I have not received anything from the estate, Your Honor. Okay. Well, this would be you. I'll let you know tomorrow. I think it's $2,200 for Menorah Gardens, and cremation was ten fifty three. So it's $1,626 each. That would be you, right? Yes. Okay. 1626 Because you asked him how much you owed, right? I did. So I assume since you asked him how much you owed, you had some sort of an arrangement with him to pay a third, because it does say a third, of the funeral expenses. That is correct. Okay, great. I do want to interject, Your Honor, and let you know that when I did receive my monies, the $2,500 from her life insurance, we had communicated with one another that I had some emergency dental work that needed to be done. It was life threatening. And therefore, he said, I don't have the email because I had to block him. I have a restraining order against him. So I lost all my emails between us. I listen. However, I ha I, nobody ever has their emails here I have or a video. A very substantial amount of those monies went for my dental. I don't care. How old are you? 59, ma'am. You have lived rent free for 30 years. And according to you, you had businesses. You worked most of that time, either selling cars or on and off for a company for 30 years. You made an agreement with your brother to pay one third of your mother's funeral expenses. And as far as I'm concerned, if you had dental problems, pay for it from the resources of one of your businesses because you had no expenses. You have very little sympathy for you. You lived in the house for months without paying the mortgage. That's outrageous. That's taking money away from them. Do you understand that? Yes, I say you lived in the house for three months rent-free, at mm. least three months rent-free. So if you paid mortgage payments for two months, I would say to you, sounds pretty <laughs> reasonable to me. You know, there's a story that's created. Correct. And what's created here is there's unequivocal information in these text messages that mm -hmm. you and your brother and sister, because... You, sir, are claiming that he owes half. He doesn't owe half. That was never the agreement, according to what you gave me. According to what you gave me, and in your own hand, you say, this is what you owe me, $1,600, not $2,600. Well, Your Honor, if I can explain, the reason why I said half is only me and my brother were included in life insurance policy. My I sister don't... was not named on it, Tip. and it was only for $5,000, so... Sir, listen carefully so, to me. I mean, if we listen put our money together, we could have paid for it. Listen carefully to me. That has nothing to do with you. Exactly. The, the, the same with his proceeds of your mother's final resting should have come out of the estate. That way, it would have been born equally between the three people who will profit from the estate. You understand? I understand, Your Honor. Very good. So, if you understand that, the math is simple. If he pays a third, you get your sister to kick in whatever she's getting back from the $25,000, and everybody is equal. Well, Your Honor, I, I mean, you're already getting the vibe that this guy is the biggest bum. He lives off second. his mother, Just a second. off of his Just, mother. Let me explain something to you. That is unnecessary here. Unnecessary and really quite stupid. Stupid. You handed me evidence, sir, that you made an agreement with him. He asked you what he owed. You told him. Yes. $1,600. That's what you told him, right. that he owes you, $1,600. That's correct. And each of you are getting a certain amount of money for nothing from your mother. I'm going to ask you some questions. Prior to her death, when was the last time you saw her? When was the last time you saw your mother? Month and year? I honestly do not recall, Your Honor, Okay, just a second. Was it in the decade that she died? Yes. Okay, well, she died in 2021. So when did you see her? Probably several years before that, Your Honor. Well, I so to, you didn't I, see her in the decade before? Your Honor, you have to understand, her house was infested with bed bugs. Pay careful attention to me. I asked you some questions. Yes. My question was, when was the last time you saw your mother? So you hadn't seen your mother in a decade. When was the last time you saw your mother? I saw my mother frequently, Your Honor. It was May, Mother's Day. Okay, Mother's Day of 2021. And, Your Honor, I did... Shh, I'm not speaking to you. 
March of 2021. Prior to that, when did you see your mother? November 2021. Wait a minute. How Just, could you hey. see her in November 2021 if she passed in August of 2021? November 2020. Okay. May 2021, November of 2020. Prior to that, when did you see your mother? I saw her frequently because... No, she... no, not frequently. Month and year. I don't have the... Did you see her every month? No, Your Honor. Did you see her every two months? About that, yes, Your Honor. Okay, well, between May and November, that's more than two months. Mm -hmm. That's when you can remember. Yes, Your Honor. So it would be fair to say that whether he took great care of her and whether the house was clean or dirty or anything else, your 86-year-old mother lived with your brother, whether you like him or not, and you were totally disinterested in her. You're the one who started this, or I was about ready to finish this case, but when you say he's a bum, I say, you know what? This guy's got to be put in his place. He may have been, but he was the bum who took care of your mother. You started it. John Rubin is accusing his brother, Randall Rubin, of not paying his share of funeral expenses. Randall claims Sean spread multiple lies about him. So it would be fair to say that whether he took great care of her and whether the house was clean or dirty or anything else, your 86-year-old mother lived with your brother, whether you like him or not, and you were totally disinterested in her. Well, that's not true, Your Honor. Well, I want to know when, if you didn't see your mother in a decade, in a decade, and she had failing health, I would say, as a child, you were totally disinterested in her. I did visit my mother after she had kidney replacement or kidney surgery. I visited her after her surgery. We both did. I just a second. Do you understand where I'm coming from, sir? I do. I have children and grandchildren, right? Sure. Ten years is a long time. That's a grandchild. If she didn't see me at least once a month, she better keep her fingers crossed that I don't change my will. Well, Your Honor, I'm sure that Sarah is very close to you where we live out of state. Just a second. We both have actual live... real jobs. Just a second. If her father didn't visit me at least once a month and we live in different states, he too would check the will. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling you is, if you don't see your mother for 10 years, you are a disinterested child. You're the one who started this, or I was about ready to finish this case, but when you say he's a bum, I say, you know what? This guy's got to be put in his place. He may have been, but he was the bum who took care of your mother. No, no. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, really? Did your mother have full-time nursing care for no. the last 10 years? I the answer is that. either yes no. or no. It's an absolute she no. She declined. That's not what I asked you. Not what she declined. Did she have full-time nursing care? That's a yes or a no. Yeah, no. Your Honor. Okay. So if she didn't have full-time nursing care and she was in poor health because based upon your blurted out answer to me, you thought she should have full-time care. Yes, Your Honor. Right. But she didn't. So he took care of her. You don't like the way he took care of her. That's your prerogative, but you let him take care of her. And you went about your business in your own states where you live, and he took care of her. And you didn't like him, and he may have been a sponge and a bum. You started it. But you were not interested enough in your mother to move next door to her or to have her move next door to you when she got sick. Your Honor. Somebody else I actually took... did ask her to move in with me, and she declined. Right. She didn't want to live with you. There had to be a reason for that there if is. she was being abused. Do you Your Honor, there is. Unless... Do I look like I need help from you? No, of course not. <laughs> then I want you to be quiet. Yes, ma'am. You owe him $1,600. That's it. Not twenty six. what he's asking you. Put it down. I have a counterclaim. $1,600. And I'll hear your counterclaim. Thank you. Which Your sounds Honor. a little ridiculous to me. I'm finished with you. $1,600. That's what you owe, except for the counterclaim, which I'll hear. Well, the counterclaim is that they posted something on the internet that says that there were bugs in the shoes you were selling. If that's... Th just a second. Quiet. Your counterclaim says that he defamed you and your business because he wrote on the internet that there were bugs in the shoes you were selling. I couldn't make that up. Let me see. Maybe I did <laughs> make it correct. up. You're correct. Yeah, exactly he posted he wrote. that there were bugs in the shoes I was selling. <laughs> he also uh, put that I impregnate Hispanic women. Oh, just a sec. First of all, that's not in here. It's right bugs, here, ma'am. It's not in my answer. So it, I want to see where he wrote 
And who knows what you're doing in Mexico? I have no idea what you're doing in Mexico. Show me what he wrote about the bugs in the shoes that you're selling. Giving me a whole lot of nonsense there that I'm not gonna read. It, it, it's not. You these give are, me- these are, these are the posts that he put online. I these only also, want to- These are also letters from my mother in her own- I'm not reading the letters from your mother. Okay. I'm reading a post or more where he says there are bugs in the shoes you are selling. Yes. Period. Do you want to hear the audio that he sent to one of my employers? No, I want to see where he wrote there are bugs in the shoes you are selling, which is what's in my answer. Right here, ma'am. May I have it, please? And I do have a restraining order on him as well. I'm not interested in your okay. restraining order. Okay, so this has nothing to do with anything. I'm gonna give this back to you, and if you don't hand me exactly what I asked for, I'm it's dismissing. The, I'm not reading all that drivel. I asked you for one post. Your Honor, if you'd like to see I don't wanna hear you. This is what I wrote. I you don't want, to see it. want, this is not your case to prove, sir. Okay, I'm just trying to be honest. Here you go, Your Honor. This is one that he Thank you. wrote don't to Don't tell me employer. one, just give me the posts about shoes. This has nothing to do it, it, with shoes. Too. This one is in well, Spanish. If you show me one more thing that doesn't say bugs and shoes, exactly. I'm just dismissing your case. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Please look at this one. It is in Spanish. Well, no, that's your problem. The counterclaims dismissed. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,600. We're finished here. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Your Honor. This court is adjourned. I'm very pleased with the judge's decision. I think she made the right decision. I wasn't really thrilled. I'm just kind of glad it's over. I never want to see my brother again. We're a very estranged bunch of people. We do not like each other. She didn't raise him right. She raised us right, and we're going to do the right thing on behalf of our mom. First and foremost, I will visit you every month, every week, every day, if that's what it takes. But in all seriousness, this case shows how foolish it is not to memorialize your wishes for the end because it creates a heightened sense of stress at a time when emotions are already running high. And first rule of wills, trust, and estates class is always have a will. So it doesn't matter how much you have, how little you have, it's important, your wishes. And, and to prevent situations like this, your loved ones having to go through. Yeah, and be angry with each other. I mean, they don't love each other anyway, <laughs> but to be angry with each other, if you can avoid that. Even young people, Sarah, who have put anything together. Yeah. You have a will? I do. There you go. I wouldn't want my loved ones going through that. So yeah, you have to take the time and write it down. And, and yeah, that's really all you can do to avoid